is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we'll take your calls about what you want. Just dial in toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro XPN toll-free line. Joining you in the studio tonight, Ian here. Brett and Mark. Brett Venat is with us, courtesy of the School Sucks Project. We'll talk more about that here in a little bit. Of course, talk to you about whatever you want to discuss. And coming up tonight, police chief has been kept out of an Ikea due to his firearm. And we can talk about... Uh, child kidnapping, as well as sexting. There's apparently some police in Manassas City who want to photograph one of the people involved in a sexing case. They want to photograph him with an erection. We'll uh, tell you more about that here in moments. And he's 17, by the way. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And let's go to the phones to start things out tonight. Steve is listening in California to Free Talk Live. Hey, Steve. Hey, guys. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, go ahead. Just wanted to thanks. Um, I wanted to talk about Bitcoin. Um, there's uh, there's an issue, a bit of an issue that's come up for me, and I thought your uh, li- other listeners, if you have other listeners that are sort of new to Bitcoin like I am, maybe they'd like to know about it. And mm-hmm. then also, I thought I'd ask uh, your advice on it. Of course, I know that you guys aren't, um, you know, super tech savvy on the subject, but probably more so than me. So maybe you'll be able to help. So. Here's the issue. Um, I set up uh, a while ago, I set up a a Bitcoin wallet, um, just the regular QT Bitcoin wallet that you get, um, you know, for for, for desktop or laptop computer from, I believe you get it from Bitcoin.org. That's right. Yeah, that's where you uh, get the QT. Great. So over several months, I've accumulated and spent uh, several Bitcoin to purchase things or transfer amounts. And, uh, you know, the QT wallet just shows a running sort of balance and everything's accurate. Well, just today, I went and I decided to download uh, a wallet app for my iPhone. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seemed to be a reputable one. I think, and I have no reason to think it's not, it's, uh, I think it's called BitWallet. And um, I just, uh, you know, because I wanted to see my, the same Bitcoins there, I went and I, um, plug my public and private key into the wallet app on the iPhone, Mm. and I noticed that the balance is different on my iPhone wallet compared to my computer wallet. Uh And uh, I researched a little bit, and I found out that um, apparently, I don't know if it's just for QT or if it's for the Bitcoin network in general, but any time, at least with QT wallet, any time you spend a Bitcoin, let's say I had one Bitcoin and I spent you know, 0.7 on something, and I'm going to get change at 0.3. Mm. Well, apparently that 0.3 goes to a separate new address that integrates back into QT, but it's it's still a separate hidden address. And so when I mm. uh, set up the wallet on my iPhone, it only has that first main address. So any of the change mm. that I accrued wasn't showing up. I had to go in individually and add all those you know, there were only two, but I had to add the new change addresses in order to see the correct balance. Have you guys ever experienced anything like this before? Or? I I use uh, Bitcoin QT on my Mac, and one thing that I noticed, and this would have been my first question, I don't know if it's helpful at this point or not, is sometimes it takes an incredibly long time to, and I mean like in my case, and I had a slower machine, it's an older Mac, it took days to render the whole blockchain to get it up to date. No, I think I understand what you're saying though. There's uh, when you get the, the the official Bitcoin software, what you're talking about, they call it QT. It's actually called Bitcoin Core now. I think is the name of it. Yeah. Uh, when you get that software, there are multiple Bitcoin addresses associated with it. When you first generate the, you know, when you first boot it up, you create your own wallet. And so I guess if you don't in, input all of those address private keys then you're not going to have them all on that uh, that wallet app on your phone. So I guess that's what you were encountering. But I'll tell you what, the best place to go for help, I think, with Bitcoin, this is certainly not a tech support uh, phone line, uh, I would recommend block the not blockchain. Um, there's the Bitcoin Talk forums, bitcointalk.org. That's where a bunch of really sure. geeky people are who really know like the ins and the outs of the technical side of Bitcoin. So, you know, uh, my answer is sure. I haven't had that problem, but I only mess with the blockchain wallet on on my phone. I don't know about any of the other ones. I've heard about what you're talking sure. about. 
if I if it if it had mm-hmm. been me, I would have just sent the bitcoins in the QT to the new wallet that you had on your iPhone, and that would have addressed all the issues rather than trying to uh, have them both have the same uh, private and public key. Yeah. Anyway, I think we've That's gone true. a far field so enough from uh, from the topic here. Was there anything else you wanted to share tonight, Steve? Uh, no, I just thought it was worth mentioning in case other people are having the same thing. It's not, you know, you haven't lost your money. It's still there. there yeah, it's go. a little frightening. Thanks for the call, Steve. So I appreciate hearing yeah. from you tonight. Got to, you know, I don't want to get too uh, technically detailed on this because honestly, we don't really know how right. it all works. We just know that it works pretty well. The the whole Bitcoin thing, the decentralized currency that is uh, international in scope and continuing to become more popular over time. Not yeah. uh, perfect, but uh, generally better than uh, you know government currencies uh, across in, well, what in he most was applications. doing is a pretty advanced level of uh, Bitcoin application, I guess you could say. The average person doesn't need to do that stuff. What he wanted to do was he wanted to have the same wallet on his computer as he has on his phone. Now, to me, that's not a good idea because I don't want to have... You know, I want to have my phone wallet be like a wallet I would carry around in my pocket, and I I would want my computer wallet to have a little more security around it, for instance, and have a separate amount in my uh, phone wallet. In the same so. way that you wouldn't take everything out of your savings account and right. put it in your pocket <laughs> and walk around with it. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, if you've got enough security on your phone, I guess that's or, fine. Or a few enough bitcoins, it would, you know. Right, yeah, if you only have a little bit of bitcoin, then that there's no big deal there, I guess. But it's just easy enough to have a separate wallet for your phone. You you know, go to blockchain.info, set up a wallet account with those guys, and then put whatever amount of bitcoin in that wallet that you're comfortable with possibly losing. I have several accounts with blockchain.info with different levels of security. Yeah. Um, you know, so... I have one that I just sort of use for carrying around money, like you're talking about, and I have mm-hmm. it on my phone. Another one I we um, that we don't have, uh, you know, access. That's it, it's very di- sort of difficult to get into. It's through a different email address and all those kind of things. So it's uh, higher level of security. And then um, then I've got cold storage beyond that. Yeah, and the other thing he was talking about is he was asked to enter into uh, the app that he has on his phone, his private key. Now. If the app that he had downloaded was, let's say, a phishing app, an app that was designed to fool you into trusting it with private information and then passing that private information on to the developer of the app, that can be a real problem. Like anytime you give up your private key to your Bitcoin wallet, you are no longer the only person in control of that. You don't have uh, full control over that. If you gave it up to a company's program, that company now has access to your private key. Do you trust them? Do you know them? Why do you trust them? So I'd be really cautious with that. So basically what he's done now is he put that private key into this program on his phone, and hopefully the company's company's trustworthy. But you now I, they've got access to your entire Bitcoin wallet. You and I got burned uh, early on in Bitcoin. We we had some Bitcoin and yeah. uh, way back. This is way back before the first spike up to thirty five dollars. Back when it was no big deal to get burned. Uh, yes, the, the amount that we got <laughs> we, burned. We uh, I think it was Bitcoin mybitcoinwallet dot com something like that. Yeah, and it was a basically an online bank, and it's like I have these Bitcoins and. There's this program they want me to download to my computer to keep them, but it's just a lot easier to do it on the web. We'll give this person our bitcoins, and then that person, when enough, when he felt they like enough people, um, <laughs> you know, gave him uh, bitcoins, either ran away or somebody hacked him. We're not well, sure right. which, but somehow or another, he was able to refund half of everybody's right. money <laughs> <laughs> when the death threats started rolling in. <laughs> I think anyone who's been who's been into this for a couple of years might, uh, or a lot of us anyway, have kind of a sad story of loss oh yeah <laughs> i know i have uh I have it's a learning yeah. curve yeah, for sure absolutely yeah and so if you don't want to go on the the learning curve and learn the technical side of things keep it simple blockchain.info is a great way to just keep it simple to have a, a wallet on your phone and one you can still access on the web so if your phone falls in the toilet your bitcoins don't disappear you just get on their website they're still there and i think that that works and then yeah, if you want to have one at home running the official software on your home computer you can totally do that. You can have a bunch of wallets if you want to, but of course, the more you have, the more complicated things get. And again, I like to keep it simple. Toll free number here, 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've got Skype as well, so you can connect with us there. Skype username is lrn.fm. We'll continue in moments here. The sexting case in Manassas City, where police would like to apparently. 
take some child pornography photos of a young male with his penis erect. More on the way. We'll tell you about it. It's Free Talk Live. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation. Protection. Success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1 800 915 2955. That's 1 800 915 2955. Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, July 9th, 2014, gold opened at 1326.60. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1374.64, 687.32 for half ounce, or 343.66 for a quarter ounce. That's 1374.64, 687.32, and 343.66. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on Earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, BuzzBox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live. Take control toll free here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype as well. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Plenty of stuff to bring to you tonight. Uh, we'll give you the sexting case here in a moment. Also continue with your phone calls and thoughts. And uh, coming up very soon here, Mark, you've got something to tell us about. Yeah, the Express Coin is the best choice for buying 
cryptocurrencies. We were just talking about Bitcoins, and there's all kinds of cryptocurrencies out there. Uh, among the ones that Express Coins offers is Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin. It's all kinds of different options over there. Obviously, Bitcoin is the... Uh, the big boy on the block, they pride themselves on, on their customer service. It's really easy to use their website, and if you have any problems, they're right there to, uh, to, to make it easy for you. They're inexpensive. The fees are you know not very high, completely legal. They're a licensed MSB, fast, easy to use. You can use a money order, check, or wire transfer. That's one way to send it in. Or you can go to a... Um, credit union in your town. You have to call ahead, find out if they've got shared branching. That's the important buzzword. But there's credit unions all over the country. I would I venture to say hundreds, if not thousands, have shared branching. And that means that there's one near you. And you can get this done very quickly um, by just going starting off at expresscoin.com. You can do it, even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app, expresscoin.com. Now in Canada, by the way. All right, let's go to the phones here. Jake's in Charlotte, North Carolina. Jake, you're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Ian. How are you doing? Hey, Jake. What's on your mind tonight? You're on with uh, Ian and Brett and Mark. Yeah, I actually had a question with, about Mark um, and regarding the windmill issue last night. Here I am. The windmill issue. Yeah, we were, Ian, Ian and I were discussing whether or not a, um, a homeowner was, uh, you know, his windmill ah. was acceptable. He, he and his neighbor were arguing about it, and uh, um, Ian and yes, I. Yes, multiple neighbors apparently are upset about this man's They just uh, kept windmill. saying neighbors, but does that mean the husband and wife next Could door? Be. Could I don't be. know. Uh, reporters tend to do that. Can I, just, can I just get some information? What kind of a windmill are we talking about here? Um, it is a— 30 um, foot tall. Okay. And it's vertical. Uh, what's is what's it called? A vertical something or other? It, it, it's a it, it's a different kind of windmill. It and doesn't it have the big around. blades that you're used to seeing on sure. windmills. It's okay. designed differently. And what's the objection? The claim is that it's too loud and that it's making flashing uh, lights when the sun sets. Reflects on it. You know, to a certain point, and the neighbors are upset. Okay. Basically. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Jake, go ahead. Well, uh, Mark sounded like a 19th century. English noble lady whose sensibilities were offended. Mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> feel like I did, but okay. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, you know, I might be a little bit harsh, but, um, but you were saying how it would annoy you or the, the sound might be grating or to, to that effect. And I think the point that I was trying to make was over and over again, like I kept pounding this point home is, is that there is at a level of noise and a level of flashing lights that's unacceptable if you're doing it to your neighbors, right? Uh, possibly. You don't think that there is a level of I mean, noise that you that uh, your neighbor could do that would be an aggression upon you? I would say arguably in, at that point in which it causes harm. Just because it might be annoying doesn't mean anything. I can go around, you know, farting and naked and running around out on my property doesn't mean I am aggressing against you. I suppose you could fire a so, cannon a la, um, what, what was it, Mary Poppins. I, you know, there was the guy down the street that would fire the cannon um, every day at noon or something. Well, what if somebody had a proclivity of doing this, um, you know, every half an hour from uh, midnight to 6 a.m.? You don't think that's an aggression well, upon I mean, their I neighbors? No. I might be annoyed. <laughs> I might be really annoyed, but I, it wouldn't be aggression against me. I, I think mean, it is. Uh, but this is the reason why. I mean, this is the reason why we have. You know, uh, we would voluntarily join societies in which these things that we might mutually find to be annoying would be uh, prevented. And if people really don't like it, they can ostracize these individuals. But just because you find something to be annoying, like I might find status to be really annoying, doesn't mean I can make them. <laughs> I can just outlaw them. Right, I agree, uh, Jake. A regular annoyance is not does not constitute aggression. Only harming another human being physically, I think, is an aggression well, uh, or fraud. Of I course, would point out that uh, that noise is something striking your eardrums. It's, well, if it's, it's and it can be considered pollution too. Absolutely. If it's and, to the point of causing harm to your eardrums, then you might have a case. Right, but this is. Th I think this is something yeah, I mean, that would. What if I can't sleep? This is something that would have to go to mediation, right? Because you'd have to understand 
the the level of annoyance, the level of inconvenience. And yes, maybe it might not be an outright initiation of force, but that's not, uh, you know, just because you're not violating the non-aggression principle, uh, I, I think there's more to this than that. And I don't like it when people who are believers in the ideas of liberty say, as long as I'm not violating the non-aggression principle, I can do anything. Right. No, yeah, there's yeah. something to be said well, for being yeah, neighborly. I, yeah. Of course, and this is the this is the role of ostracism in voluntary society. That, that's the role. Otherwise, you're you're uh, going to be responding in an aggressive manner against people engaging in actions that you just find to be personal, personally uh, objectionable. Well, and I, you're going to be using force to prevent these actions. I think so about my very. I think about my neighbors. Um, I don't really need or want anything particularly from them. I like them just fine. My son plays with their kids, you know, that kind of thing. Ostracism wouldn't be particularly convenient for me, but ne neither would it be a very bad thing. So there's only a dozen people around me that if I decided to fire a cannon off every night at, uh, you know, every uh, 15 minutes from midnight to 6 a.m. that would be directly affected by it. So, you know, the store owners in town wouldn't really care if I'm nuts and fire cannons off all the time, but the people directly around me would. Their ostracism wouldn't affect me because I'd drive away from them to get all the things I want, and then I come back yeah. to get, um, you know, to get those things. So I I don't really care about your ostracism. And it's kind of like you're announcing every half hour that you don't want friends anyway. <laughs> I don't care. I just don't care. Well, well ostracism can be very, um, very good. I mean, uh, because you can enter into mutual packs and to ostracize individuals who be part of these this policy polycentric society sure. in which, hey, this guy is firing off his cannon in my neighborhood every 30 minutes. Um, because we are part of the same VRO or whatever you want to call it, uh, they will be required to ostracize them. It could That's happen part of that the way. Conditions of that DRO. It could yeah. happen that way. A There's DRO no is uh, defense. means Defense Resolution Organization. It's uh, the brainchild of Stefan Molyneux. It's the idea that the but naming. Or it's well, yeah, yeah. It's dispute resolution, and I think. Rothbard would be the originator. So I, oh, I know really? Steph, Steph uses DROs, and I think he He's might definitely have actually it. yeah, coined that term, but the idea itself, I would say, goes back at Just least, insurance yeah. companies. Yeah. yeah, well, there's a chance that Mark might not be a member of your same uh, insurance company. Maybe he doesn't want insurance well, at all. Of no, of course he won't, but he doesn't have to be part of it. See, if enough individuals become yeah. part of the same DRO or state community... Uh, Things get a little complicated, though, right? Then are you going to require everybody to carry around an RFID card so you know who to, to ostracize? We can continue here in a moment. I mean, implementing ostracism is a challenge, right? Maybe the market can solve it. It's Free Talk Live. Question. Could too many GMO foods and toxins be overloading your digestive and immune systems? Answer, yes. If you're searching for a powerful detox that's gentle enough to use every day, use Pro-EM1 from Terragonics. Pro-EM1 is a powerful liquid probiotic that uses good bacteria to suppress pathogens and gently eliminate toxins from your body. A healthy digestive system will cleanse and remove toxins, support weight loss, improve absorption of food nutrients, and aid in controlling yeast and other infections. Pro-EM1 is made with only non-GMO and certified organic ingredients, has no preservatives, and is dairy, soy, wheat, and gluten-free. Pro-EM1 is the key to your digestive health. Order Pro-EM1 Daily Probiotic Cleanse at Terraganix.com, spelled T-E-R-A-G-A-N-I-X.com. Or call toll-free, 866-369-3678. That's 866-369-3678. Also available through Amazon Prime. Pro-EM1 from Terraganics. Life's getting better. Joe Chris Beckman. From claim jumpers to politicians to coyotes, the straight shooter that shook up the presidential race is taking them all on and licking them good. Hello, Joe. Who and what's behind these potato monkey shines? Well, these scientists are trying to mass produce potatoes that are more resistant to disease, but they're doing so in potentially dangerous ways that alter their DNA. Tater disease, and what brung us Irish? Right. You give a tater man's constitution, you can bet he's coming to play old Joe to call. Yes, well, nature's revenge could come in the form of disease. Now you or to me, taters. You got gave a mind of a tater. Joe, please, l l let me make my point. You're tater-minded and you're looking to infiltrate old Joe's cabin, but you're too late. 
No. Now you get out All or right, I Jared. slice your tater heart out and fry it up on my okay, grill. Okay, Now you all stay close here. Gonna have my jug band back here and if Jasper don't let me strum the worst part, we're gonna resort to cutting. This is the Onion News Network. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you're invited to take control of the airwaves here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 with you in studio this evening. Ian here. Brett. And Mark. Brett's here courtesy of the School Sucks Project. Check him out at schoolsucksproject.com. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of uh, different stuff available for you to peruse and listen to and watch at schoolsucksproject.com, plus interact with other School Sucks listeners and uh, there's a lot more, Brett, there. You're producing at least weekly. Oh, uh, yeah. I actually just took a vacation for oh. two weeks, so I don't have much new to report. So what, what? So when are you coming back to the behind the microphone? Oh, I, I'm, I'm trying to get things out. Uh, one thing that I just did recently was an interview with Jake DeSillis of The Voluntary Life, mm-hmm. uh, LRN show. And uh, he came on to talk about his new uh, entrepreneurship book. Excellent. So go check it out, schoolsucksproject.com. And also check out ProXPN, a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that before it reaches your internet service provider, before it even leaves your computer's data port, it's encrypted, meaning that people trying to snoop on you will not be successful. Uh, So your internet service provider probably logging everything you do right now on the web, every website you visit, every search term you enter, keeping that information for months, if not years. You can stop that by going and getting ProXPN tonight and getting started. They've got a free program, so go check it out at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Grab their software for Windows, Mac, iOS devices, or Android devices. Linux users, you can use ProXPN as well. There's just a little bit of a different setup involved. And don't forget to use code FTL20 when you want to upgrade to their premium account. Their free account is cool, but you want to get that unlimited bandwidth. You want to get multiple servers around the world to connect to and the ability to privately torrent. And you get all of that from their premium account, which you can save 20% on by using code FTL20. And if you buy the annual plan that brings the price down to $5 per month for great privacy protection at proxpn.com slash FTL. Use, again, code FTL20. And don't forget, there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee with proxpn.com slash FTL. Jake is with us in Charlotte, North Carolina. 
Now, Jake, we were talking about the neighbor with the upsetting windmill, apparently. There's some some people in, I think it was Lake Minnetonka, where Sounds right. in Minnesota. Anyway, they're upset. This guy's got a uh, he's got himself a, a wind turbine. He actually manufactures them for a living, apparently. Now, I believe he manufactures them by hand. I don't think he's got a, a large operation, but I'm not. I'm still not real clear on that. We were looking at some of the news stories uh, last night, and he says he's willing to go to jail over this. In fact, he is going to possibly be held in contempt. A judge had ordered him, I believe, to remove or to put a stop to the uh, the wind turbine. He has refused to do that, so he may be going to jail for contempt, which anybody who knows anything about contempt knows it could be a long time. It can put him away for essentially an indefinite period of time or a fairly lengthy period of time with virtually no checks or balances on that power of the judge. So this guy's pretty serious. He sounds like he's willing to be caged for his beliefs about being able to generate his own energy, and I think that what he's done is not criminal in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but it has le- led to a larger discussion about annoying neighbors. And Mark seems to be arguing that if the annoyance gets to a certain point, that it becomes aggression. Uh, and Jake, you're saying that there should be some market-based mechanism to allow people to ostracize people that they don't like as far as their behavior with a, a neighbor situation. Uh, that and, and I think when you start talking about ostracism, things get a little complicated because we don't really know how ostracism, some sort of system for ostracism would look. You were uh, sort of fantasizing, uh, imagining this idea of this DRO, a defense resolution organization, spreading the word that uh, Brett has this noisy windmill and he refuses to uh, to shut it down, or as Mark was saying, firing off a cannon uh, several times a night. Brett is a, just being a bad neighbor, and so you would somehow you know put the word out to this organization that is out there to try to help you ostracize uh, people like Brett. But how does exactly that play out? I mean, would everybody be required to uh, carry around some sort of ID card or some sort of you know RFID to where they walk through the front door of the grocery store and that grocery store is tied in with the database of the defense organization and they sorry, sir, you're not allowed to shop here. You've been marked you're a as bad unneighborly by the XYZ defense organization. I mean, it sounds like it gets a little Orwellian as far as, like, how do you identify somebody in a large area? It's one thing if you live in a small town and everybody knows everybody else, and you can say, hey, stay away from that Brett Vinat. He's bad news. But as soon as Brett moves to a new town or moves into a large city, things get a little bit complicated, don't they, Jake? Well, of course, but this is the beauty of the market. We don't know exactly what's going to come out. It could be as simple as there will be enclaves of, say, little communes or something like that, or there could be extreme polycentrism as in, uh, you know, the Rothbardian sense or the Friedman sense, uh, Friedmanite sense. But, I mean, uh, you can have positive ostracism, such as what you were talking about, um, being neighborly. If this individual is firing off a cannon every 30 minutes, then you're not going to associate with him. You're not going to go to his parties. You're not going to invite him, uh, possibly, and no one else around you would. But if you said, hey, you know, we don't really appreciate this, and maybe if you do this once in a while and tell everyone, you know, in the neighborhood, if you would like to do it, that's fine. Uh, But if you could just hold it off, you know, we could still be neighbors and we'll still be friends, and, you know, everything will, uh, will go just fine. So there, there you have positive ostracism in a way, well, in which good relations. It's like a mutualist type of thing. I don't disagree with any of this, but um, you're you're just predicting the future. And when you when you called in, it kind of sounded like this is an easy problem to solve. We don't need the state for that. And I, I disagree. I think that this is a pretty hard problem to solve, and that it may or may not be solved in the future. I've got a neighbor who a lot of people around him don't like him, but he continues. The guy with the airport? Um, I, I would prefer not to okay. say who it is, but uh, he's kind of off in people's business. And he, you know, every every opportunity he gets, he'll, uh, you know, like some kind of zoning thing goes on. He lives close to a commercial district when a zoning thing goes on and he's in, he's involved and he wants people to have less freedom in their businesses. And a lot of people that surround him don't like it, but he continues to do that behavior and it just doesn't matter. You know, like it. His life's pretty good there on the farm. <laughs> Jake? Oh, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> it just left my mind. But um, but basically, you're right. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter if it's going to be hard. You know, in 19th century America, people were like, hey, well, who's going to pick the cotton? 
I don't know who's going to pick the cotton, but it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what's going to be in the future because we know this is right, that voluntary association is correct. So well, I think the best way to deal with it personally is to deal with it in advance, and that is to have communities of people who have agreements with one another about how to behave and we do you know. have that. <laughs> we have okay, so we right. have and well, you'd have more are, of it. To some extent, these are what zoning laws are. No, they're not. Those are things that are put uh that are handed down from on high by the people who consider the themselves your masters. That's the, not the same. The reason that zoning laws exist is because there's somebody out there that really would fire off a cannon every half an hour. Um, That's not true. The reason no they one exist would do that is because Six, people want to control seven others. billion people. It's because yes. people want to control others. That, there no, are no. people. There are places with no zoning laws, and there's no cannon being fired off. Uh, every I think half you guys hour. could probably yeah. meet in the Can middle on that one. Like zoning laws, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of these things. It, there probably was in the beginning the attention of creating a kind of predictability and uniformity mm -hmm. in certain areas. Obviously, today it is abused. And as government has become more powerful on the local level all over the place, zoning has become, you know, a card that bureaucrats and, uh, you know, politicians want to be able to hold. I, I don't think that the original idea was to control people. Mm. I mean, obviously, it's it's an unintended consequence of it. But I mean, it's it's not a bad idea. Right. If you just take the state out of the picture and say, OK, we're going to have agreements about zones in areas where people live. Like, it makes sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Uh, Houston doesn't have any yeah, zoning, and everything's fine. Okay, they, well, yeah. they must have some I, kind of alternative to stop somebody from building a chemical plant in a residential area. Go ahead, Jake. Yeah, no, actually, I'm an attorney, and uh, there's, there's, really, there's really no need at all for zoning. And there's a lot of private solutions that are um, out there right now. Oh, agree, now. I agree. Uh, they're called... Yeah. They're called uh, CCNRs, or, I mean, you might see homeowners associations, things like that. But uh, but CCNRs are covenants, conditions, and restrictions that are voluntary, voluntarily placed on, on property. Yeah, and, they're, and then and they're sold along with that time. property as well. Jake, good call tonight. Thanks for calling. I appreciate hearing from you. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You take control of Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair pain-free and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits no no and no no for a limited time you can try no no pro risk-free you'll also get the facial kit and a travel case get weeks of long-lasting results that's it i'm getting a no no great minds do think alike <laughs> <laughs> try no no pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760 800-952-5760 800 that's 800-952-5760 Fact. The new NSA data center in Utah requires 1.7 million gallons of water every single day to operate. Billions of Fourth Amendment violations need massive computers and the water to cool them. That water is being supplied by the state of Utah. Fact. There's absolutely nothing in the Constitution which requires your state to help the feds violate your rights. 
our message to Utah? Turn it off. No water equals no NSA data center. Visit offnow.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free. Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here and bring up anything you want by dialing 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, Manassas City teenager accused of sexting a video to his girlfriend is now facing a search warrant where prosecutors and the police want to take a photo of his erect penis. He's 17. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. We're going to continue with your calls and your thoughts here. Don't forget to join us online over at freetalklive.com. And Free Talk Live is, uh, of course, brought to you by Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Go to victimlesscrimespree.com and you can uh, watch the movie there for free. It's a feature-length documentary film. And it's 90 minutes in length, and it'll give you a good view into some of the things that happened here in our very own Keene, New Hampshire, with our friend Derek J. Check it out at victimlesscrimespree.com. We go to Aaron listening in St. George, Utah, to KZNU. Hello, Aaron. Aaron in St. George, going once. Aaron in St. George, going twice. Tell you what, we're going to put Aaron on hold there, and maybe he was in a bad cell or something like that. Uh, gentlemen, further comments on the zoning issue? I would I, I I would think that people who might be listening to this who do love the state and do believe in the state and think that we need it to solve these kinds of problems, I think we we kind of get away from the original issue and I think what they would have really liked to hear to maybe believe in us a little bit more is if we could have dealt with this specific windmill problem and I know you guys tried to do that last night and I'm guessing you didn't get anywhere near a solution. Uh, well, I think it really it comes down to how much flashing light and mostly how much noise does one of these windmills make. Mm -hmm. So let's just leave the flashing lights out of this because it sounds kind of a, like a ridiculous claim to me, the flashing lights. So the thing's made of metal, sometimes the sun hits it and light flashes in their windows. Mm -hmm. That's not enough for me. But okay. um, I would say, on the other hand, how much noise does this windmill make? I don't know the answer to that question. And I think that the, a windmill can make, you know, those big, giant windmills? Yep, this is not one of those. There's one in Limster. Um, there's there's some in Limster. They have a windmill farm, and these <laughs> things are gigantic. Yeah, they're, they're incredible, right? Like, so somebody puts this up on their property, and I think I want to know if they're my next-door neighbor that well, this was their plan. Well, in that case, plan. wasn't it the power company or the government or something that put those up? Uh, there was a company that made a deal with those yeah. people, and they, of course, got all the paperwork and talked to all mm -hmm. the join uh, butters and all that stuff. Gotcha. And every, everybody got their piece of the pie. You can I believe see. that. Um, but that's kind of how it goes. So I think that there's a level of noise that's yeah. aggression, and then there's a level of noise that's acceptable. You know, if it if it just squeaks a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, but that could get annoying, yeah, right, yeah. over time? Well, it depends on where you are. I mean, is it, can you only hear it on your porch? Because if that if it was squeaking that I don't know, but I can tell loud, you when they were interviewing the dude, I presume the guy who's who, the homeowner in this case. He's got to be able to hear it too, right? I, could, I can tell you, I could not hear it in the background. Now, I don't know where he was on his property at the time the interview was being conducted, but wherever he was, it wasn't loud enough to reach the microphone of the uh, camera. 
I think there's so many variables in this story. How many acres is his property? How close is the neighbor? How close is the neighbor to the windmill? Like all these things would would matter. The, the rate, then, right on Lake Minnetonka, which says to so me that relatively they don't small have, property. Yeah, they, uh, yeah, they probably so. don't have a, so. you know a big ranch. On okay. a lake. Are other neighbors complaining? Like, these are all it's things... Not clear. The story that we were reading makes it sound like multiple neighbors complained. Right. Mm-hmm. So, would there be some kind of resolution that allows this gentleman to keep the windmill and, uh, you know, create some kind of situation where other people are willing... Like, some kind of benefit sure. where somebody people, moves. That's well, how no, no, no. Some kind of benefit this. where other people uh, will tolerate the noise in exchange for... Well, he's well, only making that, enough uh, electricity for himself, and it's not even enough to take him off the grid, so it's not like he can share Well, he's the saving some money on his electricity as a result. Maybe he should uh, cut off some of that. Look, uh, I'm saving uh, $50 a month. I'm willing to give you $15 a month um, for the uh, privilege. No deal. Of- Too annoying. Okay. I don't know. See, this is this is the thing. You've got to live with these people. Yeah. He, he charges on a counter suit, Brett, that uh, their dogs bark. So... Uh, you know, I don't. This is a. This is why. Um, this was the original dispute. Who did it's they Ian. take it to? Who? 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 A did judge. They? Okay. And who so, will throw the man in jail? Right. But this and, is the problem. These are children of the state, right? Mm-hmm. So when when a problem like this That's happens, how they solve the, the impulse is not to go to your neighbor. Right, and maybe maybe and that was tried. I shouldn't assume that because maybe that was tried. But in a lot of cases, you're right. People don't go to their neighbor; they go to the police or the zoning enforcement department. Absolutely, right. No one came to you years ago about your couch. No, no. Uh, the first notice I had about the couch in the yard was from the the zoning enforcer, from the couch enforcer. Right, and that's how these things go. So I don't. I, I don't think that every windmill, every neighbor should have uh, their say in every windmill situation. Mm-hmm. But I've watched the town where I live do the, do, you know, they've sided with the business at times. It's not always the the squeaky wheel that does, in fact, get the grease. I, I don't know what it's like in other places. In some places, it's probably, you know, I, I, I've heard that on Longboat Key, Florida, pretty much where we're from, Ian, the next uh, zip code over from where we're from, you have to get... Uh, a um, you have to get a permit to put carpeting in your house. Mm. That's a rush to the bottom. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, this is you know, government wants to know everything about what you're doing. I don't know. That's what somebody who uh, had lived out there said, and I would have to check that out. I'm not making an accusation against people. The good, the good government folks of Longboat Key. We're gonna try Aaron one more time. I'm told he is actually there this time. Aaron, are you with us? Aaron in Utah. Going once, going twice. Maybe there's some sort of technical difficulty there behind the board is what I'm thinking. Uh, for some reason, it, you know, it's, the audio is not making it to us. Uh, toll-free number here, 855-453. Let's try Robert in Vermont. Robert, you're on Free Talk Live. Okay, so last night, we were, talk, you got, we were talking about zoning restrictions. Yes, sir. And you were talking about a guy that set up a windmill on his property. Mm-hmm. Yep, we're talking and about it again tonight too. I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I'm just, I'm just barely turning this on. I, I had a couple of people staying at my house for a few days. They came for pork fest, and and they had a flat tire, and they were here for a few days. And they just left a little bit. And, cool. But, so, but, what's but anyways, uh, what's your comment on the issue? Well, they, you, you, you guys, the guy, you know, put up a, a, a windmill on his property, and I'm thinking that. If there was a zoning restriction that was already in effect, the guy doesn't have any argument at all because it was already in effect. If he just went ahead and just put it up, you know, he's kind of like he's disrespecting his neighbors. You know, kind of like what I was alluding to last night with the gentlemen that were, you, know, they, you put a video up on Free Keen and they set up a, a, a laser light over in Manchester when they were doing the fireworks, and I mean, all I saw, I mean, to me, when I saw the video, I'm going to have to go look at it again, was a bunch of squiggly lights, you know what I mean? Or a squiggly line. And, you know, uh, the guy said that and people didn't like it, then don't look at it. And you can't help it. It's right there in front of what people are trying to view. And I guess the thing that kind of, the kind of got me was there was some people that came over afterwards and it had expressed how annoyed that they were that, that, that this guy had done it. Mm-hmm. And the gentleman stood there and he just smiled and he laughed at them and he, and, he, and he just said a lot of disrespectful things, at least from what I heard. You know, and I just, I can't see where that's any type of peaceful activism. 
them at all. I mean, mm. for those who don't know, what is this story? What is this story? Like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I'm Robert sure explained it. He was talking no, about the laser okay. that was uh, brought so, out by activists in Manchester during a fireworks show on the Fourth of projecting, July, projecting uh, laser words on the side of a bridge. I think it was on the Fourth of July or whenever the fireworks okay. thing was. Okay. Maybe it was the third or the fifth. But yeah, yeah that's what I thought they were doing was uh, writing stuff on the side of a, a building or a structure. Yeah, that's what I thought they were doing. Yeah, the, I think it was a, a bridge, but I'm, I'm so, not. Really Robert, are you claiming that they shot the lasers right at the fireworks so that people couldn't no. avoid seeing them? No. That wouldn't do anything. No, 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 no. That, 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 what I'm saying is that where they were shooting off the fireworks, it was just down below where they were being shot off. So when you see the fireworks going off, you see that line, the scribbly lines or words or whatever they were. But my point is, is that and it's, it's my understanding and listening to Free Talk Live that I have been for over three and a half years that, you know, the idea is to, is to do peaceful activism. You, you know, like, and the woman came over or some people came over afterwards and they were clearly, you know, upset and angry about what they had done. And it's the response that they got back afterwards from them, you know, that was what I felt was disrespectful. Hmm. Well, I, I didn't see that part of the video, Robert, so I can't really comment on the on the response. I mean, I know that uh, the guy that was involved in the lasering that you're talking about, Bill Domenico, is, he's always been a very nice person, very respectful very nice, yeah. individual, so I don't know who said what to whom there. But, uh, you know, this is just another example, and, and thank you, Robert, for the call tonight. Yours is another example of how what is, in my opinion, peaceful activism? Simply displaying a laser uh, writing on the side of a building or a bridge. There's no violence involved in that. But whenever you do any activism, somebody's going to get upset. In this case, writing messages about the NSA and the TSA on the side of the bridge during people's Independence Day celebration, it's going to upset some people. It's, it's inevitable. More coming up here. You can take control. Hour two's next. If something in this facility breaks, bends, or bursts, Granger's got our back. 20 cases of disc springs from Granger.com. New rotary encoder ordered on Granger's mobile app. A dozen splash goggles from the local Granger branch. What more could you want in life? Granger has over 1 million products for all our facilities' needs. 1 million. That's a 1 followed by six zeros, kid. Everything we need whenever we need it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Do you remember when summer road trips meant loading up the family in the car and playing hours of I Spy and license plate bingo? I found Alaska. America's Best Value Inn invites you to share stories and photos from memorable summer trips now through September 15th at americasbestvalueinn.com. You'll be entered for a chance to win free stays at any of our 1,000 hotels, gift certificates from TA and Petro stopping centers, and other fun prizes. Share your memories and make your own this summer at America's Best Value Inn. I Spy and ABVI. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, July 9th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,323, while silver opened at $21.16 
and Bitcoin is trading at $618.82. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all of your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com or call them up at 512-459-5253. In the news, Israel launched a series of airstrikes on Gaza militants Tuesday after the militants fired more than 85 rockets towards the country Monday evening. The rockets struck several major cities, causing air raid sirens to wail throughout the city of Jerusalem and central Israel. More than 50 targets were hit by the airstrikes launched by Israel, killing at least 16, and five Palestinians were shot dead after crossing the border into Israel. Bay Systems, a global company engaged in the development of advanced defense, including security and aerospace systems, announced plans to invent 3D-printed drones, directed energy weapons, and a modular drone called the Transformer. Named as such because of its capabilities to fly as a single unit or to divide into three separate crafts. The company plans to fit the Transformer drone with directed energy weapons, capable of firing a concentrated beam of energy at the speed of light, potentially able to destroy fast-moving jets with extreme accuracy. Through an internal Border Patrol executive summary, Town Hall confirmed that at least 16 unaccompanied illegal minors those under the age of 18, according to United States government policy, are members of the brutal El Salvadorian street gang Mera Salvarucha, or MS-13. Graffiti left on the walls of the Nogales Border Patrol Processing Center suggests the young men had ties to the organization. The gang is associated with violence ranging from brutal assaults, torture and murder, and has been known to recruit middle and high school students. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central Time, at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800 874 9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, July 9th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. In a plan to turn solid waste into power, U.S. company World Echo Energy signed an agreement to invest nearly $1.2 billion to generate electricity in Iran, as stated in a report by the Russian Times. The project, which aims to produce around 250 megawatts per day by burning 1,500 tons of solid waste, is expected to create 650 immediate jobs, most of them employed locally. The deal marks a further thawing of relations between the U.S. and Iran, after all business activity was halted between the two countries following the 1979 U.S. hostage crisis. A new study conducted by researchers at the University of Michigan concludes that despite sub-zero temperatures, water in its liquid form does exist on Mars, but only during summer and spring months, and for just a few hours at a time. That report from The Independent. The findings propel beliefs that the planet is more than capable of supporting life, especially with the right temperature and presence of a certain salt discovered there last year. The study's lead researcher, Dr. Nilton Renan, said even just one tiny droplet of water is enough for bacteria to grab a hold of support for the Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It. It's live Sunday afternoons at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. That's 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon at 1370 AM in Austin. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Find them online at CaboBobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, July 9th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile.
As of today, the average cost of a pack of cigarettes has gone up to two hand jobs and a stick of beef jerky. For more, we go now to Onion News Network prison economics expert Hal Rogan. The prison economy runs on cigarettes. They're involved in every economic transaction at some stage, mm -hmm. from contract killings to naked woman picture acquisition. Right. That's why we've got shampoo at six batteries. We've Whoa. got tattoos at 50 commissary stamps. Now, for what it's really like out there in the market, let's check in with major cigarette trader Big Dap Ramirez. Big Dap, nice to see you again. Thanks, Rick. Good to see you. What's happening, Hal? How's it going, Big Dap? Now, it's obviously a boom time for cigarettes right now. I am getting a lot of hands But with jobs. prices this high, analysis shows you're going to be seeing a drop-off in real sales soon as consumers turn to smoking grass fejos. Look, we've been through this before. The market teaches us not to panic. Mm. But if I learn anything in this game, it's that a wife or girlfriend will pass off a few decks in the boneyard. Supply will normalize, and we'll see cigarettes returning to a single hand job or less. Let's big dap. Best of luck to you. We'll keep checking in on the story with Hal throughout the day. Thanks, Rick. Moving on to some happier news. In Atlanta today, two snitches were beaten to death. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want here. Toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. Skype on into the show at username lrn.fm. Coming up, a pretty outrageous development, a sexting case where police and prosecutors want to photograph a teenage a uh, male, 17 years old, in a sexually explicit manner. Specifically, they want to take a picture of his erect penis. We will uh, share that story with you here in a moment. Also, your calls and thoughts. If you're just tuning into the show, we got back into the, the whole property rights, bad neighbor discussion uh, again tonight. And then Robert in Vermont brought up the uh, the laser light show issue, or what happened in Manchester over the last uh, last weekend during the 4th of July, the Independence Day celebration out there where they have, uh, I guess, some fireworks that are set off near a bridge, you know, by the river there in Manchester. And they were setting these things off, and apparently during the uh, the time there, some of the activists from the Manchester area, and actually another activist from Grafton, had come out there, set up lasers. And actually, if you were at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, you've seen these very same lasers. You see that one of them is called the Green Beam, and it's owned by the activist in question, uh, Bill Domenico. He came out, he set this thing up, he had some pre-written you know, messages that he wanted to send to people. And I think one of them was about the TSA and another about the NSA and just kind of, you know, like wake up kind right, of I messages. Think the, the, you know, Independence Day is a good day to talk about issues like the NSA with everybody who's out there celebrating America. Yeah, and some people don't want to have that conversation, means. Mark, and they're going to be upset by the fact that you would ruin uh, their uh, their holiday. I mean, they came out there expecting a party and not have to think about things. And then there's some sort of message about the NSA and how the government's really bad. And you're trying to feel good and drink and watch fireworks. and Hot dogs. Got, yeah, you got all these, like, you know, hard issues being presented to you. I mean, that's it's apparently offensive to people. So some people apparently approached uh, Bill Domenico and, uh, and the other Bill that was with him, and they, they complained uh, about this. They, they expressed that they were upset about it. And, you know, just when you think you found the most harmless, friendly, kind of easygoing activism out there and— Projecting a laser light on something is in no way damaging and seems to be right. pretty cool. The people that complain about chalk um, ruining things. Okay, right. but you understand for people, like, th this is, I, th I think we would all understand it more if you, like, went and sat in the back of church mm -hmm. and, like, projected With a, a laser, laser, like, up around the front of the church is, like, God isn't real or said something oh, like yeah. that. I mean, that's what I think it feels like to right. people to see those things when they're trying to have this sort of somewhat thoughtless patriotic experience on the 4th of July. You're absolutely right. And there needs to be some empathy for that because that's most people. And I, if Robert was suggesting that that's not peaceful activism, I disagree. It's definitely peaceful activism. What you guys do here in Keene is peaceful activism, of course. And... I would like to see in a perfect world, well, not in a perfect world, a perfect world, we wouldn't have to a do better this. World? We wouldn't have to do this stuff. But uh, in a better world, we could combine peaceful activism with a form of peaceful communication, right? So when somebody does come up to us after doing something like this and they're very upset, the response isn't like, oh, well, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not hurting anybody because that person is hurt, at least on an emotional mm -hmm. level. So at least being inquisitive and saying, well, OK, w w what bothers you about this? W Everything. What could we do? What could it's we green. Have done? It's bright. 
It has messages that are qu- causing us to question our beliefs. Everything's wrong with it, Brett. Turn this it off. Turn it off now. This isn't the right day for it. This is That's often a good what they'll one. tell you. Yep. Like, whoa, whoa. Any other time would be totally right. fine, but when, whenever not now. No one's here. And you, there's nobody to look at your display. Is a fine day to do right. it. Well, why not now? Why? This is. We're this upset. Is. This is uh, the Fourth of July, Brett, and this is where we celebrate God and country and the troops, and we celebrate freedom because freedom, yeah, and that's why. And you're trying to tell us freedom, no. Oh well, you don't think you're do- forcing your beliefs on us. So you see me as a dissenter. Is that what you're saying? I see you as a troublemaker out here with your laser light show. Get that out of here. Go bring some fireworks to the. To the beach, okay, kid? Weren't okay. the founding fathers dissenters? Yeah, that's well. And if this fails, yes, I would have some balloons with flags on them that I could give out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can empathize with somebody. Sure. But you can also not agree with them, right? So, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand some people don't like video cameras. Um, you bring a video camera out in public, there's a good chance someone's going to say something to you about how they don't want to be recorded. I was out today. Garrett Ian actually had gotten a notice from the Cheshire sheriffs saying they had something for him to pick up at their office. Turns out it was a subpoena telling me he had to be in court tomorrow. I guess it's a good thing he went because my viewpoint was, why would you bother going down there and making their job easier? Let them find you and serve it to you. <laughs> uh, but you know, apparently, uh, you know, he would have missed the subpoena had he not gone down there. So I went down with him to video record this thing, and he's coming up to the courthouse building, and I'm sort of recording this as he's approaching, and I ask him, hey, what's what's happening here? Just kind of give the camera a summary of, of why he's at the court. And as we're walking, this woman, just standing off to the side, I in no way, shape, or form had attempted to, or do I believe that I did record her in any way. She was just off kind of in this patchy a patch of grass under a tree. And as I'm walking by her, she makes some statement to the effect of, um, would you mind not recording until I can get over there or something like that? Like she wanted to get away from uh, from where we were. And I just kind of looked, I, you know, I caught her question. I understood the question and I was focusing on Garrett and trying to record him. And so my answer was, no, thanks. And I just kept uh, kept walking. I mean, I, I walked away from the area. That was my intention the entire time. I didn't see any reason to uh, to stop to try to reason with her or, you know, talk sense into her or tell her, assure her that I wasn't recording her. I was busy recording something else. So there's only so much time you can spend on the people who want to come up and try to tell you to stop doing what you're doing. Do you like think it. for you personally, because you've been doing this for such a long time and you've dealt with so many people who don't like it, that maybe you've lost some of your patience? For them, which is totally understandable if it if oh, it's happened. Well, a lot of times, um, you know, I I have no interest in re- recording the average person on the street. Sure, so yeah. Usually, it's not an issue for me at all. Um, but you know, I can empathize with why somebody wouldn't want to be recorded. You know, maybe they rolled up on the wrong side of the bed, they didn't do their uh, hair correctly, or there's something about it. You know, them that day that they didn't feel uncomfortable with, or maybe they think cameras will eat your soul. I don't know what it is that people believe. Well, they but- want some level of privacy. They know the facial recognition software is coming. They think that uh, YouTube and Google are compiling, likely all of this is true, that YouTube and and Google uh, are compiling facial uh, information about people, trying to put that together with their information, trying to create dossiers and um, on people so they can sell advertising to them better and you know do all kinds and, of and stuff. And I'm sorry uh, that you don't like to be recorded, and I'm sorry that this makes you uncomfortable, but we're in public, and I'm not going to stop. You know, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, which is holding government officials accountable and uh, recording activism. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. I'm not going to change how I'm doing things here because somebody's upset about it. Because every time you do anything, somebody gets upset that's, about it. That's true. That's true. And I can take feedback. I can modify my tactics. I can, and we have done that. Activists over the years have changed uh, tactics, uh, you know, and based on feedback. But a lot of times, it the feedback is irrelevant because it, I can't change what right. I'm doing. Well, the in- and the intention of the feedback is to undermine what you are doing, like. Oh, I'm sorry. There's somebody here who doesn't like, d- didn't consent to you videotaping, mm-hmm. so you may videotape. We don't care that the biggest news story of the year is occurring right in front of you. You can't videotape here because somebody doesn't like it. Those people over there from WMUR or the newspaper or the television, they can record because we say it's okay, but you can't because we say it's not. Why don't you be peaceful? And you're not a real journalist, right? It's just it's it's all this over and over again, and I, I think that at some point or another, I, like I get how the activists stir things up here, and many times for 
nothing. But at the same time, there are a lot of people on the other side of the equation, they're just frankly anti-activists. They're yeah, just true. people that want to do the opposite of whatever it is you want to do. Sure. And yeah. they, th there's no making them happy. You, if you do what they want, you are the a-hole that finally saw reason for a moment. Yeah. And you'll be an a-hole again tomorrow. And that was why I asked you the question about patience, right? Because it has mm -hmm. to wear away at you over time. And there's also the realization that, well, if I just, I just ignore most of it. Yeah. And I don't yeah. read the YouTube comments most of the time. Yeah. And it's not I, worth it. I think you have to pick your battles, too, obviously, because maybe there is somebody who objects to something you do. And you just saying, oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, but, you know, I have to do this. And maybe I could try to, like, not get you in the shot or something. Maybe that would mean something to them. And then, of course, there's most people that would do it who are exactly what you said. They're just anti-activist. Toll-free so. number tonight, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And a lot of times you'll find people who've loved a lot of the things you've done, but then there's that one thing that you do that they don't like. It's Free Talk Live. One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the reemergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-223. For the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As good as gold can be yours by calling 800 686 2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800 686 2237. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. Hey! That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hardworking men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. 
but there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial us toll free, 855 450 free, whether you want to talk about zoning or people getting upset at activism, even the most. The, you know, the easiest activism, the simple, uh, low offense, what you would think to be non-offensive activism, it's still going to offend somebody, including a laser light that was uh, projected on the side of a bridge in downtown Manchester this weekend. Apparently, it was upsetting some people. Uh, we can continue. You're welcome to share your thoughts. The toll-free number 855-450-FREE. And don't forget to join us online at freetalklive.com. We're giving away a couple of hardcover books. You can get them for free. These aren't e-books. Uh, the last time I gave away some books, people were like, yes, just send it to my email address. No, 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 no. These will need to come to a snail mail address because they like are real books. Yeah, they're real books. And they're from Bain Publishing. One of them is uh, 1636 Commander Cantrell in the West Indies. And the other one is Rescue Mode by Ben Bova. Hmm. And um, they they look, we've got them right here in the studio, look like great, great books, and uh, you can get them right now. All you have to do is text these keywords to the number 366-948. So that's the number, 366-948, and the keywords are 1636 and Rescue. So if you can text. You have to text both of them? Both of those words separate times to the number. Uh-huh. So you'll if you text 1636 to 369 um 366 948 then you will be entered to in, to get the 1636 book if you in, oh. but if you don't text rescue you won't be entered to ah, win okay. the rescue mode uh, by Ben Bova. Have you posted these numbers cuz there's a lot of numbers. Have it you is. posted them anywhere? That I'm going to post them on the Facebook page. Okay. Facebook, Google Plus, Twitter. Yes. Okay, great. Cool. And what's the timetable for this? Entry yeah, thing? we're going to do the uh, the giveaways. is going to be on uh, Tuesday and Wednesday at noon, randomly selected by a computer. Next week. Next week. Okay, yes. so plenty of time to enter that. Right. So plenty of time if you're a little behind in your podcast or whatever, you can do that. Okay, cool. And uh, so, yeah, what was the texting number again? The number is 366-948. 366-948. And yep. text? 1636-1636. Or and, and rescue. Or rescue. Gotcha. All right, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Let's go to the phones and to you and your thoughts. Bobcat is in Arizona on the amp lines. Hello, Bobcat. Hey, guys. Uh, appreciate taking my call. Sure. Um, just want to say I'm a huge fan of everybody uh, at LRN and what you guys are doing for Thanks. the uh, Liberty community. So thank you very much. Um, I did want to call about uh, a book I just finished reading. I actually listened to the audio book that uh, Ian was kind enough to provide. Um, oh, very, cool. very great read. Highly it's called The Market, Market for, for Liberty, Liberty. and uh, yeah. folks who want to download said audiobook can do that at books.freetalklive.com. So I listened through it. I bought the Kindle version, so I'm going to continually reread it as cool. I have discussions with my friends and, and kind of try and understand a little bit more. But I guess the reason I'm calling is that I, I read the book, listened to it, and I really didn't find anything that I could disagree with. It's now, a darn good book. There is a lot going on in that book. It's very, very dense. Um, requires a couple reads, I think. But uh, I'm wondering, that's kind of how I walked away from the situation, and then I'll continue reading. What uh, do you guys think about it? Uh, have you read it, and, and what are your thoughts? What are some things that you maybe disagree with and then agree with? Um, I've obviously read the book. I uh, loved it so much I turned it into an audio book. I did that with the permission of the copyright holder at the time. And the agreement was that I was going to put in all the work to the uh, to make it into an audio book, and that as a result, I would be able to distribute it to people for free. And uh, so I love the book, and it's a great book. I got nothing in there that I really can recall disagreeing with. There was the segment on, or the, the couple chapters on the judicial system and the police, kind of explaining how those things might work in right. the absence of a government monopoly. And for me, that was like the biggest mind-blowing part of the book, because ne I'd never really gotten any vision for that whatsoever. I mean, I knew that we needed to get the government out of it, but I didn't really know how it would work. And so I know I had to read that part over again a second time to really solidify those ideas, but uh, I, I didn't disagree with anything. I don't know about you guys. I uh, read it years ago, so and yeah, it's been a while for me. But all I can say about it is, is it's very well written and it's very dense, as you say. I 
It's actually a fairly short book. I'm not sure what dense means. Well, it's short, but it has a lot of information gotcha. in a short period of time. Um, it's ahead of its time, too. It was written in the 70s. Absolutely. And it seemed to really telegraph a lot of what, what ended up coming. I think it's totally worth the read. Um, what what it is is it's conjecture about a world where uh, there's no longer a monopolistic state. And one of the difficulties we have is transitioning from this world to that world. Most people will say that... Yes, um, you know the when, once you have a the right conversation with them, they'll say yes. An organization that claims a monopoly privilege on the use of violence in a given landmass isn't particularly moral. However, moving from that situation, which is the situation on every square inch of the planet, um, and and frankly the moon, if they could get that far, they uh, you know transitioning from that to something that is more moral presents a lot of problems and therefore you know what it's just conjecture as to what these things would look like brett uh did you oh have i'm you sorry read i the have book? not read the book okay no. very good so there you go two answers greg go ahead with your thoughts or not greg rather uh bobcat <laughs> no no i appreciate the uh the, the review i i just highly recommend it to anyone that has not read it i've gotten to the point where it's even cheap enough for me to buy on kindle that i will buy it for my friends Cool. Um, so just kind of a couple uh, things that I recommend for people to uh, check out, and I appreciate taking the call. Thanks, Bobcat, for the call tonight. Glad you enjoyed it, and thanks for sharing the book in advance. Toll-free number tonight, 855 free This is Greg, and he's in New York. Greg, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, guys. Uh, by the way, I wanted to ask, what is the book's name? Uh, that sounds very interesting. The, the book Bobcat is called The mentioned. Market for Liberty, which you can uh, download in audiobook form for free at books.freetalklive.com. Ah, very nice. Yep. Um, okay, I actually, I just wanted to call in today because I usually call in and kind of state my own views. And I just wanted to ask a question uh, for you guys, which is like the non-aggression principle uh, is the kind of the cornerstone principle of volunteerism and everything. But how do you actually tell who is um, starting the aggression? I think you, you guys just had a good discussion about, you know, activists who are not really hurting anybody, and yet they are offending some people. So if I was to, you know, go to your yard and let's say you own a huge property, you own acres, and I just go in there and, like, defecate in your yard, uh, you may take offense to that, but I'm not really hurting anybody. So how do you tell – how does that system work? Like, how do you actually tell who started it? And, well, uh, that's a property rights and, violation and if you're going to come on uh, somebody's property and do something that you weren't welcome to do. Although there are lots of systems uh, for, cre- uh, you know, creating uh, better land through human or <laughs> Uh, but, but the point being, if you don't have permission to take a yeah, dump on I'm somebody's land, land. <laughs> if you don't have permission to take a dump on somebody's land, it's a property rights violation. It's a pretty clear aggression. Usually with aggression, you have a pretty clear uh, picture. I mean, especially if there's video or witness statements, uh, if somebody usually hits first, right? Uh, or they break some sort of property. Um, I'm not really sure I understand your question. Well, I think that, um, you know, what if. Okay, well, those are easy cases. Right, and I think that there are hard cases. Like, and let me you give you one, to, for yeah. instance, if I may, Greg. So, um, you know, oftentimes mm-hmm. libertarians will say things like, your rights end at my nose, and uh, things like that. But I think your rights actually extend beyond that and into the realm of threat. And I think that there's some really good arguments against the non-aggression principle that, um, you know, have to do with playing chicken in a car. Now, if I, if I decide I want to play chicken with an oncoming car... I don't actually have to touch that car to cause them to do weird things that may, um, you know, they'll feel threatened and they're liable to, you know, pull over, pull off the side of the road and hit a tree or something like that. So if chicken means, you know, like pulling over and like running directly at them in the wrong lane. Still, though, it's pretty clear in that case who's the aggressor. You've pulled into the person's it's a lane, to so their oncoming yeah. lane, yeah. and you're coming at them. Uh, hang on, Greg. We can bring you back here for more discussion in moments on Free Talk Live. If you need to say happy birthday, Happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you. ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the field is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers, picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. 
to get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99. Go to proflowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's proflowers.com. Click the mic and enter code P-L-O-W. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at Facebook.LRN.FM. That's Facebook.LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything that you want. You can also get a free pound of coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. 100% organic, shade-grown, top 1% grade Arabica. It's called BuzzBox Coffee, and it's great stuff. It's competitively priced with other high-end coffees, uh, but they do something special at BuzzBox that you just don't find with other companies. They've actually set up a program that allows people around the world to buy into their coffee co-op. And for every 10 listeners that uh, buys coffee from coffee.freetalklive.com, it'll finance a microloan. So each 10 listeners uh, finances one microloan through World Vision to help people in poverty get an opportunity to change their lives for the better. And you can start and help all of that process out by getting a, a pound of coffee for free. You just have to pay the shipping cost. And then after that, you'll be on an auto ship subscription, which you can cancel anytime. Uh, but hopefully you won't because it's great coffee. So get your first pound for free at coffee.freetalklive.com. And again, just pay the shipping cost. That's coffee.freetalklive.com. We bring Greg back on the line. And Greg, you're back with us here in New York. I uh, wanted to make sure we had to have a chance to uh, get everybody's thoughts out. So um, did you have um, some something to add to the discussion? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to clarify. So basically, uh, I just want to ask a simple question. Uh, 
who, you know, I was talking about who in a particular situation starts the aggression. Never mind what to do about it, but who started it. And I want to bring four examples, and maybe you could tell me uh, what you guys think. Uh, who's, you know, who are they really starting the aggression? Sure. In my subjective opinion, these examples will be from the least harm done to more harm done, right? So the first one is um, walking around naked in the street and, you know what, actually having sex in public. So I don't think I'm hurting anybody physically by having sex in public, naked, yep. on the street. I say um, no aggression there. The second, I would say that that's a, uh, a right. issue of uh, tragedy of the commons. Um, the problem is public property. And, you know, I don't think that I don't think that the government can actually we, we don't own property in common. We don't. There's no such thing as public property, it's government property. And I think the government illegitimately owns property. So what I actually would be talking about is, you know, having sex on somebody's property who may or may not agree with it. And if they do agree with it, likely people wouldn't be walking around there. Just because someone's offended doesn't mean that aggression has happened. But what do you think, Brett? No, I agree with Mark. I think it's a it's a public property, which is a contradiction. Well, I could still terms. be having sex on my private property. You I mean, can... if I'm in a neighborhood and uh, you know there's sex, go I wouldn't do this personally. But uh, some people are maybe more of an exhibitionist uh, mentality. They could very well go out in their front yard and have sex right there for where everybody who's driving by and walking by can see. You're and filming it and then you're projecting it uh, out at a fireworks <laughs> display. Yeah, <laughs> people are very bothered by this. Again, uh, I say no aggressor in, no, uh, in either of those I, situations. I agree. I agree. You I have think no the, right not to be offended. The street owner or the sidewalk owner may very well decide to put up a wall in front of your house if you like to stoop in the front yard. Okay. Next. Okay. Uh, yeah, I would agree. You're not you're not uh, hurting anyone. Okay. The next is that you have a few acres of property, and I really need to go to the bathroom, and I just decide, you know what, uh, human feces is excellent manure. I'm just going to go and defecate on your property. I think I haven't really hurt you personally because I don't believe in owning that much land. I don't think a single person should exclude others from that much land. And therefore, I don't think I'm hurting you as a person. And I can go defecate in what you consider to be your property along with your bank or whoever enforces it. But I don't agree with I think that there's very little restitution that would be owed if you were somehow caught for doing that. I think it would be, first of all, difficult to catch you for doing that. But if uh, you were, so let's say there were surveillance cameras up, game cameras that were able to identify you as the mystery pooper, um, <laughs> you know, and, you know, or for instance, I was walking through the woods on the property as the property owner and I stepped in the poop and I was inconvenienced by having to wash my shoe off. I mean, we're talking about a very minimal, not even worth really finding the culprit kind of level of, uh, I, of aggression. There. I can tell you mammals, uh, you know, choose to poop on my property on a regular basis. Yeah. I have 11 acres. I don't know if you think that that's too much for a person to possess. But um, I I rarely do anything about their pooping. And I, and I as again, if somebody were to do something about it, the amount of money and time it would take to investigate the crime yeah. would not be worth whatever you would get in restitution. What I, do you think, Brett? I think no, if you got caught, it would be weird. It's it's just one of the casualties, basically, of owning that much land, right? Like, you can't be watching it all, all the time, and you have to, I think, accept that occasionally a man might walk on there and poop. But it, that said, there's a little bit of aggression there, now, right? Yeah, like, it is a, it's yeah. a violation of property rights, but um, how actionable is that for the person seeking restitution? Not so I would much. say barely. Yeah. I would say that if, now, now think about it this way. It's okay. a much smaller lawn. It's a lawn that's you know a, about the size of a waterbed out in front of a tiny little house on a mm -hmm. uh, relatively busy street, and somebody comes and like decides a city lawn. to do that. Yeah, a city yeah. lawn decides to do that instead, and then you're like, this is very strange. Right. Well, there was a story about the California mayor who actually picked up some poop and then walked over to somebody's, somebody's house he didn't like and threw it in their front uh, front walkway. Yes, he did do that. Um, he didn't actually do it himself there, but it was uh, probably some dog poop he had required from someplace. Yeah. So, yeah, that's possible. And I think that if somebody did that over and over again, the best thing to do is sort of go out and videotape them. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know... Maybe find out their name and put it on YouTube with their name and them doing it and that kind of thing. Yeah. So you're talking about like if somebody you're switching to, if somebody just had like a little patch of land, like in an urban area. And yeah. they could catch people. And then the guy was doing it over and over again. 
Okay. Well, that goes from you know from the 100 acres and somebody yes. just asked. It goes from kind of the inconsequential to the hilarious. <laughs> right. The, At no point do I see sort of aggression uh, By the way, in, in a terrible sense. We right. never did the update on that story about the California mayor. He did uh, resign, apparently, after uh, being embarrassed for being caught uh, throwing mm. poop on somebody's front, draw, uh, yeah. front walkway. Well, yeah. A mayor should never throw poop. Greg, uh, item number three. We still have Greg. You don't just poop. You, uh, I'm going through. You know, you own acres and acres of land. I'm driving through. It's late at night. I'm sleepy. I don't want to, you know, uh, hit cars on the road. So I need to sleep somewhere. So I go into your huge property and I actually camp out there. And in fact, I squat on your property for maybe two days. And you know what? I play loud music there. I don't physically hurt you. I just entertain myself. And you possibly can't even hear me unless you specifically go into your large property and and hear me playing that music. So it is your property, and I'm not physically hurting you, but I am living on your land now. Okay, um, so and this is easy. Um, here in New Hampshire, we have something called current use. So you can go hiking on people's land without a problem. You're not supposed to disturb it, so it wouldn't be appropriate to go picking their blackberries or anything like that. But you can hike through their land um, because if they get the the tax break from having a large piece of land. However, um, that doesn't mean you can set up camp and live there for a period of time. If you decide to set up camp on somebody's property without their permission and it's sort of obvious it's somebody's property is it you know like instead of sort of, sort of logging property or you know a, a a mining company you know people that wouldn't be there at night and wouldn't really care um you're going it's you're liable to be asked to leave and th that's what the first step in this or would be that then you're th then you are a trespasser and uh, you know whatever force necessary to get you to leave is appropriate. So um, you know I don't know. In today's world, you would call a police officer. In the magic world of uh, Libertopia, you would uh, call your uh, you know security company and they would escort the person off the property. And if they didn't want to escort, the level of violence aggression would escalate to the point that somebody got a bullet in the head. Ah, so in example number three, you're saying that the security company that you called wasn't the one that initiated force, even though they are the ones that are physically harming me or threatening me. But the fact that I don't believe in your property rights right. uh, to that much land, um, I'm harming you first, and so they are more, they're legitimately using force? Yeah, this I don't is what this is. This is what if I just don't agree with their property rights? This is That's a true. dispute about property rights, and we have uh, talked about this many times here on uh, Free Talk Live. The fact is, we live in a world, you and I, Greg, live in a world where people don't agree what property is. They don't even agree. So the the town you live in, the county you live in, believes that your property belongs to them and that you have to rent it from them on an annual basis by giving them money. And if you don't, they will kick you off of it. Mm -hmm. You aren't a property owner. You are a property renter. Well, it's certainly true. And Greg, hang on, because I know you had one more example. We'll get to that here in a moment. Uh, it's certainly true that the discussion we're having is predicated on the participants agreeing with the idea of property rights. If we can't agree it with that is. in the first place, then we can't agree to live nearby one another. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation. Protection. Success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. 
Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job job seekers, and making all the other conversations you have more productive, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can bring up anything that you want by dialing toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, and join us online over at freetalklive.com where you can enjoy the features. If you uh, like the show and you want to help support Free Talk Live, then please become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. Now, if you need focus and are feeling fatigued, trying to get the extra edge when it counts, you need to look into modafinil from modup.net. That might help you uh, you know, get things done, be more productive, get you out of the rut, give you the focus that you're looking for. Studies show one in five students use modafinil as a cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about how modafinil from modup.net is making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge they need. Check out modup.net and look into it for yourself. They've got fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. Modup.net is a supporter of the Bitcoin community, so when you order from modup.net, that's M-O-D-U-P.net, with Bitcoin, you'll get a 33% discount. And to make the deal even better, just use code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. Remember... Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So do your research and go to modup.net for great service at a great price. And again, don't forget code FTL at modup.net. As we continue here with Greg in New York, he's giving us some scenarios which are getting progressively more uh, offensive, more danger, uh, dangerous uh, and aggressive uh, involving the parties uh, with a, a piece of forest land. One person owns a large swath of uh, forest. And your current example that you're giving us, Greg, is uh, if you show up there apparently not believing in, uh, you know, I guess the same property rights as the owner of the multi-acre property, 
you then just set up camp because you need somewhere to camp and this was convenient so you decided to set up there and that's kind of where we're at in uh, in the discussion what i was saying before we went to the break there is essentially that if you can't agree on property rights up front then none of this holds like th this whole discussion that we're having is pointless because in order to uh you know to understand who the aggressor is in these scenes uh, we have to have the same perspective on property, and that is that you know you should be able to own things, and that property is a good idea, and that people hopefully will believe in property because it is just a belief. You know, if if enough people didn't believe in property, then property wouldn't exist. So it's uh, property is an important idea, one that has gotten us uh, to the point where we are today. And of course, one could argue that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, but when you allow people to have things, they're better stewards of those things rather than if nobody owns anything, then nobody really cares about the things that they don't own, etc. But if you don't agree with property rights, or if your property idea of property isn't the same as ours, then we're going to not really get along very well in uh, if we're trying to live in the same place. Yeah, and uh, just one more thing before I say the final example. Um, property as an idea is definitely a very valuable and good idea. Um, the question is how it's uh, executed, and I think you're right. If you, if we all agree, as you say, on something, what do you mean by we all? Uh, property is a complex thing. It requires thousands of little edge cases and laws, one of which, for example, is called adverse possession. That's if you don't live on a piece of land, let's say, for 10 years or 30 years, depending on you know, which jurisdiction you're in, um, and somebody squats on it, well, then that person actually can start owning that land because you've essentially abandoned it. And that's just one out of like thousands of possible scenarios. Right. It's so different in different property, places. It, it does it, seem like it's different in different places too. Different, uh, you yeah. know, different jurisdictions, different governments have different rules on, um, you know, how long it takes for squatters to be able to, you know, come in and and take land. And I I get that point. I think that yeah, there's I think there's a good argument for homesteading unused yeah, property. Yeah, and how you know how much land can one have? But I would give you a counter example though, Greg. And here's a and it's really good. There's an organization called the Autobahn Society and several other organizations that buy unused land, uh, the Nature Conservancy is another one, um, that, buy, uh, that buy or gifted unused land, and the intention is to let them go natural. Now, those organizations, do with they are doing what they intend to do with the property, which is to make it go natural. They're growing trees and, and animals on mm, the property. Yeah, what do you do so there? So they're doing precisely what they intend to do with the property, which is to say nothing, and do they own the property in 10 years? They're a good liberal organization. That is an excellent question, and I don't know. And my point is that uh, who, who decides this? The jurisdiction. And I think if you take your answer to this logical conclusion, you're right back to the use of force in a monopoly in a jurisdiction, because you say we all have to agree on, on uh, how to resolve this. And how do we all agree? Well, it has to be posted somewhere, and... We all, when you enter that jurisdiction, presumably, maybe you have to sign a contract. But either way, it has to be enforced. Well, what, so no, but what you're, right what you're claiming is, is that and, what you're claiming is is that um, binding arbitration isn't possible, and we know that it is. What do you mean? Well, even if it is, but what if two different courts have two different opinions? Well, I mean, how are we going to get through two different courts if you have a um, if you have a dispute? Then you know there would have to be some way to bring it to court. Now, I don't know the answer to that, and the marketplace would have to decide um, exactly how to do that. But you know, I, I mean, there's a plaintiff, there's a defendant. They decide um, amongst themselves, or through seconds, or lawyers, or whatever terminology we wish to use for this. You know, who the arbitrator is going to be. They uh, they agree ahead of time that this is going to be arbitrated and it is going to be binding. And, um, you know, if not, there's, uh, you know, there, there, there kind of has to be a claim and a counterclaim. Uh, this man was on my land. This man removed me from perfectly fine land that I was on, right? They're kind of, you know, in a dispute, it has to kind of be that right. way. I don't have all the answers in that circumstance, but I can tell you the judicial system we have today is broken and owned by plutocrats. Greg, uh, example number four. Okay, fair enough. So number four. So the fourth one, I think, will be interesting because in this case, uh, the property is much more um, controversial, maybe, in some circles. So I actually think this would inflict the most harm of the four. So let's say I 
took all my savings and I invested it into making a computer program. I spent two years doing it. I hired people. We built this computer program and we have the code, right? And we basically distribute this program online. Um, and we charge for it. We charge $20. We try to recoup our investment and hopefully everybody involved uh, will make money. Well, it happens that somebody gets the program and there's no copyright protection. I, I mean, there's no... Um, there's no uh, software protection that prevents them from stealing it or, or they crack it, okay? And then they simply distribute it to everyone and we can no longer sell the program. So they haven't harmed me physically and you may not believe in owning, uh, in restricting people from copying anything, but they've harmed me in the sense that indirectly now, all that money is lost and all the people that worked for me um, will now lose their jobs. So in some sense, um, and this is why I'm saying it's controversial that this is the most harm. But, you know, should there be some sort of property in abstract uh, creation? No, I say like no. I don't believe in intellectual property. I don't think that anything you can copy uh, infin infinitely uh, is the same as real property, which obviously you can only have one thing. And then if someone deprives you of it, then it's gone, etc. You didn't own those customers. Uh, they may not have actually bought the software from you. Ultimately, even if the other distributor, whoever it was that took the software didn't exist, there's no guarantee that all those other people would have bought the software from you anyway. So you can't really even prove that you know that would have been your your business uh, in the first place. Also, this happens to every software company in existence, and somehow they manage to survive doing it. You have this rather cataclysmic conclusion to uh, one person <laughs> stealing, you know, stealing or borrowing or sharing your your, <laughs> your software. Um, but I mean, this happens to every no software company, and they all come up with ways to deal with it. Some of them put ad ads right in their um, you know, software. You, you want it for free? No problem. You're going to look at uh, ads uh, during it. Or they have, uh, you know, or, or the, you know, and there's a lot of people that just give software for free. They work on that Ubuntu, and they have created an, an incredible what? product um, for free. And so... I, I don't know what the world's going to look like in the future as far as intellectual property goes, and there's certainly some dispute in liberty organizations over it. I believe in intellectual property, and I believe a person should be able to keep a secret, and I believe that people should have to uh, abide by contracts. So if you have a contract with a customer, you know, a, you, terms of service or whatever, and they violate the terms of service by giving that away when they purchased it for $20 or whatever then that's fine if on the other hand you know you're just it's not my job to pay the state to hunt people down on your behalf it's kind of an artificial form okay. of protection that you're asking for i just want to is, say one quick go ahead one, go ahead go ahead one quick clarification uh one quick last thing and that is um look there are there's a real example let's say this popcorn time which right now is as easy to use as itunes and there are forks of popcorn time popcorn time lets me download any movie including movies that took millions of dollars to make. So those people that made the movies, if Popcorn Time in two or three years gets more famous and used by more people... Stand by. We're going to have to continue the conversation in Hour 3 next. Free Talk Live. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. 
When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, July 9th, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.17 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,327 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $623. Antiwar.com reports Shiite Houthi rebels from northern Yemen have seized the city of Amran, the provincial capital of the Amran governorate, and a walled city just 32 miles away from the capital of Sana'a. Intense fighting against the Sunni tribal faction led to the Houthis in control of Amran, and at least 200 people have been confirmed killed since the latest round of fighting began over the weekend. Houthi spokesmen declared the takeover a victory for the unprivileged sons of Amran and denied having any interest in using the city as a staging ground for advancing on Sana'a itself. Whether that's true or not, the Hadi government and its predecessors have been openly backing the Sunni Islamists against the Houthi for decades, and the sense of defeat is palpable. Yemen has been fighting these on-again, off-again wars with the Houthis, primarily at the behest of the Saudi government, and the Houthis rarely venture outside of their comparatively unimportant and almost wholly undeveloped northwestern region. Their primary grievance is that the Yemeni government has discriminated against them in modernization projects. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. The AP reports a senior Israeli cabinet minister says that Israel will not halt its military offensive in the Gaza Strip until the rocket fire is halted. Israel's Minister for Public Security, Yitzhak Aronovich, said in a television interview that the operation won't end in a day, and it won't end in two days. It will take time. Asked whether any efforts are underway to broker a ceasefire with Hamas militants in Gaza, he said, not now. Shortly before the interview, the military announced it was calling up additional reservists as it prepared for a possible ground invasion of Gaza. Earlier on Tuesday, the army was authorized to activate up to 40,000 reserve troops. During the 2013 Porcupine Freedom Festival, Davi Barker presented an idea for a renegade psychological experiment. Since then, he has refined his idea and put his plan and research into writing. He explains, We aim to show the world beyond a shadow of a doubt that power corrupts absolutely and corrupt authority deserves no obedience. Authoritarian sociopathy is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Antiwar.com reports, Faced with growing criticism after an announcement yesterday that they were not planning to even try another meeting this month and would hold their next session on August 12th, Iraqi's parliament has reversed course and now promises to meet this upcoming Sunday. Last week's session was the first for the parliament since the election and lasted less than 20 minutes before a walkout by Sunni Arabs and Kurdish members of parliament meant that there was no longer a quorum. 
They had initially planned to meet this week, but over the weekend it was revealed that talks on a new parliament speaker had not been resolved and that they were putting the matter off. With the growing ISIS war leaving them on the outskirts of Baghdad, time seems to be of the essence for parliament to meet while they still have a building to meet in. Still, if the members of parliament have not come any closer to an agreement on a speaker by Sunday, there is little reason to believe the meeting will be any more successful than the one last week. And finally, Ukrainian Defense Minister Valery Haleti announced there will be no more unilateral ceasefires by Ukrainian troops, while other officials promised a nasty surprise for any of the eastern rebels that continue to resist their takeover. Since the takeover of Slovyansk, most of the rebels in the Donetsk region have moved into the city of Donetsk itself and have been barricading themselves in, pending a Ukrainian military invasion. Defending the city is likely to be difficult as the Ukrainian military military is increasingly using not only airstrikes, but armored vehicles in its offensive. Donetsk and Luhansk remain the two major strongholds of the ethnic Russian rebels who are seeking increased autonomy. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. North, an extremely vocal opponent of gay marriage, drew fire during his 2010 re-election campaign for saying that the legalization of gay marriage would lead to man-horse marriages. In one instance, he told the New Haven Register, quote, it's a slippery slope. If we allow two men to marry, what's next? Men marrying horses? But yesterday, North found himself at the center of a media firestorm when the New York Times published photos of North on what appears to be romantic outings with a horse. Gathered during the Times' two-month investigation, the pictures show North in almost a dozen locations with the same three-year-old mare. A former aide discovered links to numerous horse-related sites, including phillyfreaks.com and hothindquarters.com on North's work computer. The Times is accusing North of using federal funds to pay for luxurious trips, including a three-night stay at the high-end Sueño Stables in Catalonia, Spain, last month. North released a statement yesterday claiming he only spent time with the horse twice while conducting research for his anti-gay marriage project. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and we're launching into the third hour of the program. Plenty of time for you to call toll-free, bring up anything you want. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. Skype on in at username lrn.fm. We're going to continue with your calls, and then coming up, uh, still a story about the uh, teenager. He's 17 years old. The police would like to get a picture of his penis in an erect state, and uh, they are... They may, get away. About it. they may get away with it. Uh, we'll uh, share the story with you here in moments. Your calls come first. There's pushy penis picture takers. We've had an extended conversation with Greg about property rights and aggression, and you were giving us an example, Greg, of this thing called popcorn time, which is the first I've actually heard of popcorn time. I was doing some research during uh, the news break there, and it, uh, it appears that popcorn time is a program that was originally uh, developed and uh, I guess abandoned by its original developers because they were just taking too much heat from it. They abandoned the development, and then it was picked up by another group of uh, developers who are anonymous, so they can't take the same level of heat because nobody knows who they are. But Popcorn Time is apparently a program you can download for Windows or Mac that allows you to stream movies, copyrighted movies presumably, uh, through Torrent. So to anybody who's ever downloaded torrents before, it seems like kind of a complicated process. You've got to get a torrent program. You've got to find the torrent you want to download. You've got to, you know, open that torrent up in the torrent program. And, it, you know, it seems like it's, I mean, to, to somebody who's good with computers, it's not going to be hard to run torrents. But to, you know, to a newbie, to somebody who's inexperienced, torrents probably seems like a level of involvement that is, is too complicated. So it seems like this popcorn time, and I haven't downloaded the program. I've just been reading about it. Uh, but it seems like Popcorn Time is a way to make torrents accessible to anyone. Have you actually tried this product, Greg? Uh, yeah, I've actually downloaded it. And, well, on the air, I will say that I downloaded a movie that I had already purchased. <laughs> but, uh, yes, I've tried it. And, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's an, in fact, it's uh, very easy to use. It's like iTunes. In fact, in some ways, it's easier to use than iTunes. So it becomes even more harder <laughs> to uh, keep people from uh, simply getting the movie without having to pay for it. Yeah. And one more thing I just uh, think that your listeners would like to know about this 
a lot of the time, uh, these copyright uh, protections and these uh, property rights actually harm the consumers because, for example, I have a high-def projector, and very few high-def projectors are allowed, and home projectors are allowed to show movies, high-def uh, versions of movies. So there's literally no way to even show a movie that I bought on the projector that I bought because of the way that companies have agreements between themselves. Hmm. That's an interesting uh, example. It's sort of a free market example, but yep. it is uh, restricting. So why did uh, you bring up the, the, the popcorn time thing in the first place? You were kind of driving at a point, and uh, we had to go to the news break. Okay, so I'll, I'll try to be brief. Um, basically, popcorn time and products like it are making it easier for people to simply get information for free mm -hmm. and uh, harder to enforce any kind of property right. And so I figured out how to ask my question in one sentence. Uh, the sentence is this. How can you, while being consistent, support the right of a, one person, an individual, to spend $50 million for the right to exclude by force uh, other people from freely using a whole lot of land, like maybe thousands of acres of land, but at the same time be against the right of a person to spend $50 million kind of homesteading let's say, the Harry Potter universe or something, and then since they, you know, homesteaded it, by force exclude others from kind of freely making use of that universe and doing whatever they want. Where is the difference, exactly? Well, well there's a difference in that uh, if I share something that I purchased with somebody else, you don't lose anything. The person who, um, you know, spent $50 million making the movie and I sh buy a uh, copy of the movie and then I share it with Brett, um, he didn't. they didn't lose anything. If Brett sits in my living room and watches the movie with me, it's completely within whatever arbitrary laws they make. However, if I, um, you know, just burn a copy off of the DVD or whatever, and give it to Brett, then I've broken some rules. Likely, it's much more difficult than that, but I'm just saying that uh, you know that's the case. You don't lose anything, whereas I, the owner of the um, you know thousands of acres of land, lose the exclusive right to use that particular land. And I would like to say, Greg, that this is and this is really important. Is this conversation is being had in the liberty realm, and it isn't settled. Our no. opinion on this is our opinion. It is not the libertarian opinion. And my opinion is subtly different than Ian's, mm. so it's probably subtly different than, than Brett's on this. And our so, opinions on this have changed over the years and as they well have. on so, intellectual property. So, for instance, you know, uh, to rephrase kind of what Mark said, with real property, it's finite. There's, you know, if I have a rocking chair, I only have one rocking chair. And if you take that from me, then I don't have the rocking chair anymore. But if I've got a, you know, 3D printable uh, spec design for a rocking chair, I can copy that 3D printable design as many times as I want to, and anybody can have it without depriving me of my original design. Same thing with a movie, same thing with uh, with music, etc. So and it's the, a big difference. The two areas that, these, uh, that intellectual property usually comes down to in these conversations is blockbuster movies and uh, dr uh, pharmaceutical drugs. And I'll address blockbuster movies very quickly. Most movies make it or break it in the first weekend. Movie theaters provide a different experience than watching it at home on a 14-inch laptop screen. Um, I go and see every single one of Marvel's movies in the theater because I support what Marvel does. And I want to see, I want the 3D, I want the mm -hmm. surround sound, and I'm willing to pay the $30 it takes to get me, my wife, and my kid in there to see it on the matinee on the 3D. And lots of people do that, and Marvel makes makes its money back on the movie in the first weekend. And then there's all kinds of, uh, you know, toys and things that come out after that. Secondarily, on pharmaceuticals, the what you would think is that um, copyright protections would actually get us better ph pharmaceuticals, but the, uh, the uh, evidence is in the other direction. There's less innovation in pharmaceuticals in the last couple of decades than there were in decades preceding because what companies do now is essentially change products uh, just a little bit in order to keep the 17 years for their drug going again and you know, go through the process. The um, the incredibly difficult uh, the FDA patent. regulations yeah. make it very difficult for people to compete. What we see is worse innovation in drugs um, with better copyright protections, not better. Uh, go ahead, uh, Brett, your thoughts on real right. property Thanks, versus... Guys. Thank you, Greg, for the call tonight. I want to get Brett's thoughts, though, on the idea of real property versus intellectual property, and is there a difference, and, and what are your thoughts there? Well, I think...
I, I think there is an issue if somebody takes something like a like a movie, right? Like they mm-hmm. don't become the owner of it through the legitimate means of ownership, right? Like you buy a DVD, mm-hmm. right? If they just steal it somehow and then copy it. Like I have a problem with that, but if if I I still don't see and I'm still very very open on the on this issue and I'd be willing to learn more and maybe change my opinion. If somebody purchases something, I don't see how some kind of user agreement could be written that tells the person what they can do with something once it becomes their property it's a contract okay i mean you know you could i could say look i'm selling you this knife but um you aren't allowed to use this knife you will be in violation of the agreement to use this knife to uh stab people with you know you can stab other things but not people ever not in defense not an offense nothing you may not stab people with it. And at that point, you violate the agreement that we had if you stab somebody with a knife. End of story. Okay, well, what would be the restorative process if uh, I violate the if agreement? I assume the contract has, uh, every good contract has uh, clauses for these kind of things. So you owe me $100 for every person you stab with a knife. All right, well, that's then I might look for somebody who doesn't have that contract, I would think. Indeed, you would. Yeah. And this is what it kind of comes down to with uh, the, with the, the the file sharing thing is, is, you know, there are ways to keep your secret secret and you can go through those. But I ultimately, whenever I watch a movie and it has that FBI threat mm-hmm. at the front of it, that is somebody that's a big movie company using the government as its enforcement agent to keep me from. Uh, you know, doing what I want with this product that I purchased. And stopping innovation, right? And, yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and so I, do I get the same protections? No, I don't get those same protections. That's a, it's a class that that uh, corporation gets that's a, above what, what I get. And I find that to be, you know, very disturbing. And it's 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 just not fair. And, and that's how the, the MPAA has managed to throw its weight around. Plus the fact that I bought all kinds of things. I don't have the, you know, like I bought an old uh, movie, the DVD broke. I don't have the right to that movie. It's They're true. selling the right to that movie. We'll come back with more. Uh, I'm going to put the link up for Popcorn Time on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. You can check that out on your own time. We're coming up here with Free Talk Live in moments. Business owners, listen up. Give me an L. Give me another L. Give me a C. What's that spell? Incorporation. Protection. Success. Incorporate your business. L-L-C. If you're about to start a business, these three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why LLC.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-915-2955 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from LLC.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Incorporation, protection, success. Incorporate your business. Call now for your free guide. 1-800-915-2955. That's 1-800-915-2955. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians, bureaucrats, and central bankers, How can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Free Talk Live. If I were a parent, and I am not. Mark, you are. I am not. Uh, but if I were a parent, then I would be teaching my kids the difference between right and wrong based on whether or not people get hurt, not whether or not some elected official has written some words down on a piece of paper and deemed something to be illegal. There have been so many things over the history of time that have been labeled right. as illegal. It's legal. It was legal to shoot engines in this country. Did that make it right? Legal and illegal, right and wrong, these things do not correspond no. here in America.
America. It, they rarely correspond, as a, as a matter of fact. Anywhere. Yeah. Now, there are some things that are illegal that are absolutely wrong, sure. like murder or arson or destruction of property or However, stealing. it's also illegal to not pay taxes to the federal government. Is that wrong? Absolutely not. It That's is heroic. It is right to keep the money that you earn. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nesquik. Try Nesquik 4-Packs, perfect for lunches and great for kids on the go. Look for it in the juice aisle. Snack time is a great chance to sneak extra calcium into your child's diet without making him feel like he's eating something he doesn't want. Serve up dairy-rich foods like smoothies, flavored milk, frozen yogurt, and string cheese. He'll love the treat, and you'll love knowing how good it is for him. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Oh, hey. It's Free Talk Live. We're back on the air, and you can talk about anything that you want. I have installed the uh, popcorn time thing. Fascinating little piece of software, and it does appear to work as uh, it specified. The thing that I want to know about with this thing, we're going to continue with your calls about whatever's on your mind here, and I did link to it on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter, is the thing about torrents. This is kind of a technical discussion. I'll try to keep it as easy, easy to understand and as brief as possible. But my understanding of downloading a torrent is that when you're downloading a torrent, you're getting it from different sources. You're getting a seeds. file. Yeah, you're getting it from different seeds that are out there, different people who have the same program or a torrent program running on that file. But they will feed you bits of that file in no particular order. Right. If you watch your torrents download and they show you the little bar with the little what parts Blips complete? That, yeah, yeah, that are complete. They're all over the place among the file. So maybe this popcorn time thing somehow forces the file to download in sequence because they're claiming here, and I haven't actually tried to play a movie yet on popcorn time. It may not be legal to do that. Uh, but uh, you know, if you hit the play button, presumably you're getting all of the beginning of the movie first rather than randomly throughout the, the file. So I don't know if they've managed to figure out a way to do torrents differently. I'd I'm very confused about how the technical side of this works, but essentially it looks really easy to use. You install the software, you run it, and then it comes up with what are some of the popular movies at the moment. RoboCop, the new remake of that. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street is another one. Noah, Pompeii. So some of the, the Lego movie, uh, some of the more recent movies. Everything's and then awesome. You can just type in the little search. Mark, you told me to search for Breakfast Club. And so, you know, you look for that, and oh, there it is. And then you click on it, and then it gives you different options. So you can watch the uh, the 720p version or the 1080p version, and there's it'll actually show you how many seeds there are of that. So the more seeds there are, the more likely the movie's going to be able to stream to you at a clip at which you could watch it. If there aren't very many seeds. Unbroken. Se right, yeah. If there aren't very many seeds, then I imagine it's going to be a little more of a challenge uh, to watch the film. So you actually select the resolution of the movie that you want to watch and uh, and then just click watch it now, I guess. So they've really made it. I mean, this is astonishingly easy. I don't understand how it works, but it's amazing, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Let's go to your phone calls and your thoughts on whatever's on your mind. Kristen's in New York. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Kristen. Kristen, in New York, going once. Kristen, in New York, going twice. Maybe she's got some technical difficulties over there. Let's try a different person. Jim in Lynchburg, Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Jim. Jim, hey, going guys. once. Love your show. Hey there. Love your, love your politics. Hello. Welcome. Here. Welcome. Go ahead. 
Thank you. Hey, so you guys don't mind if I throw a big barbecue party and call it Pork Fest and you do all the promotion and then I put it right up the street from you on the road so you have to drive by and then I put a big sign that says Pork Fest. No, I think that'd be awesome. Pork Pork Fest definitely needs competition. Let's fill in between like your party and our party and have like an awesome party in between too. Yeah, why would I care about that? Yeah, but I'm doing all kinds of but my party is all statist oriented and, mm. and uh, I don't know. I mean I just well, come on, man. Well, no we're bad property. people. We're bad people to ask this question too, and let me tell you why. Because we've got real life trumps your example. There was a, <laughs> there was a show in the past called that called no. itself Free Talk Live. I'm not kidding you. They were a bunch of white supremacists. And yeah, so that's true. There was a white supremacist, Free Talk Live, and Ian did nothing. Refused to do anything about it. And ultimately, the you know the show went under. It's very difficult to finance uh, you know a talk show, especially through podcast and that kind of thing, which is what they were doing, live stream podcast. And to make it all that much more fun, apparently, was it the one of the hosts shot his wife and himself in his trailer? Is that the right story? Um, I think he shot his wife and then killed himself. Uh, I think with uh, inhaling the vapors from a car in a, inside a garage. Okay, well maybe the you know CO two is that CO two? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there, that's the uh, th- that's hold, hold the, on, my brother. the real hold story. On. Yep, I need a clarification. Time. You mean the Klan guy tried to start a free talk live after you? Yes, free some talk- Klan people. I don't know who they were. There, there's, oh. there, you can probably oh. still find the show out there if you uh, go out and search for VNN Free Talk Live. They called themselves the Vanguard News uh. Network. Uh, it's one of the uh, you know one of the several racist websites out there, and they were calling themselves Free Talk Live. And it you know that resulted in them coming okay. up on the first or second page of Google search results. Oh, man. Well, you guys are radical enough for me. All right, I, I got another question for you. All right, you, Jim. <laughs> um, we got our Boy Scout patch. Yeah, yeah I'm not, you're, you're not Klan guys, though. No, definitely I'll not. I'll let you go on that one. But I you, don't support racism at all. You in said fact. that you... So it was upsetting okay, to you, me. You appear to me to... Let him ask his question again. Uh, <laughs> you, you appear to me to reject even the basis of the nation state how the whole world is organized. Yep. And you know, the, the all borders are arbitrary, pieces of land with you know marks there is all arbitrary. Yet the entire basis of the Free State project is to take advantage of the arbitrary pieces of land and to pile a bunch of people into one piece of land. Sure. That seems to be contradictory to me. Help well, me out there. Sure. I mean, well, look, if you're, um, you know, if you're at war with an enemy who's arrayed in a certain fashion, you may or may not want to fight that enemy if that's an aggressive enemy. But if you're going to fight that enemy, you should do it with good strategy and good tactics, not to stand there with your you know, arms at your side and say, we want a peaceful uh, you know, resolution to this. Please don't lop our heads off. I mean, that's a terrible tactic, and it's been tried over and over again. Um, so, yes, the, the, very, the fact that I think that the nation state is an inefficient way to mete out justice, protect pop property rights, and do the variety of other things that um, people want from their governments— Um, you know, this monopoly organization called the state, because to me, the state's just another form of government. It's the one we have generally, but that we can try other things. The fact that it exists doesn't mean that I shouldn't use its, um, you know, its own. The state doesn't exist. It's just an imaginary concept. Whatever that means. What does exist are people who believe in the state. And while I don't believe in the state, and I think it's a terrible, destructive idea that has been, the, you know, led to the deaths of many of our human brothers and sisters over, uh, you know, hundreds of years, I, you know, I don't believe in the state, but I know there are people who believe in the state, and those people believe in things like borders, and they believe in uh, in governments, and they believe in elections and all this, and so I'm more than happy to, in, you know, engage in those processes in order to achieve some chance at being more free, and so if I can be more free by being in a certain arbitrary political geographic boundary where I can actually have uh, more of an impact for the ideas of liberty, then that's the place I'm going to be, and there's nothing hypocritical about it. Yeah, there, there's other dangers, too, with the the nation state itself that it certainly is not going on here in New Hampshire. I mean, the, one of the one of the dangers is people attach their very identity to the nation state and people aren't coming here to do that. So I think that is a, a key distinction as well. 
Jim? Well, okay. I mean, it, it, you know, unfortunately, the United States are not individual nation states as they should be, but it does seem to be kind of contradictory. So once you guys seize power and everything is, is freedom and fruit loops and everybody's happy in New Hampshire, are you going to dissolve the boundaries of New Hampshire? I, I, the boundaries well, yeah, to some I extent like to... are defined by the other organizations around right. you defining uh, you know, their boundaries, too. The answer would be, yeah, I would like to see open borders of, uh, of New Hampshire. So, therefore, we would have no boundaries, but the other people might because they would still have those ideas. And Thanks, I'm not Jim. sure things are going to turn out the way that we want either. Good call. Good call. I appreciate the call and the thoughts. Appreciate hearing from you tonight. Toll-free number is 855-453. Yeah, we've got a long way to go before session be- secession becomes an option. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Listen up, all you preppers and survival enthusiasts. Sigma 3 Survival School has a brand new survival instructor training program that will teach you everything you need to know about survival and then license you to teach our survival programs so you can make a substantial profit from it. If you have always wanted to learn to be completely self-reliant and would like to make money at it, then check out Sigma 3 Survival School Survival Instructor Program at survivalschool.us or call 479-561-3886 today. Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. It saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage wanna... and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. And, of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business. But Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Listen, you've heard the commercials before. Whether you owe 15000 or $15 million in tax debt to the IRS or state, we can help. On a never-ending payment plan? Penalties and interest killing you? Missing tax returns? Being garnished or levied? Not a problem. If you qualify, we can remove levies and garnishments within days or even hours of hiring our firm. If you've been summonsed, or even worse, receiving tax warrants in the mail, call right now. Are you a business owner with back payroll taxes? Is the IRS or state threatening to close your business you've worked so hard to build? Protect yourself and your business. Even if you've tried in the past, new guidelines could potentially qualify you today. So what are you waiting for? We can take that tax monkey off your back. Call the Tax Monkey now, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, 800-281-6030, that's 800-281-6030. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. (laughs) 
This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you want here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Whether you want to talk about intellectual property or bitcoins, you know, anything goes here on Free Talk Live. And I don't know if we're going to get to the story about the uh, the sex-offending 17-year-old who uh, was involved in sexting. Now the police want a picture of his penis. We'll uh, give you the details here if we get a chance. Otherwise, we'll hang on to that because we've got to go to your phone calls. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. More of that coming up. There's a whole bunch of reasons why somebody might want a second passport or to renounce their citizenship. Last year was an all-time record for people renouncing their U.S. citizenship, but people do it from all over around the world. And whether it's a government institution um, intruding on your privacy or Uh, protest against your nation's foreign policy or to protect your wealth or avoid pointless regulations or onerous taxation or maybe as a refuge, um, you may want to get a second passport or change your citizenship. Check out the St. Kitts program at PassportsForBitcoin.com. Now, obviously, Passports ports, excuse me, passportsforbitcoin.com does take bitcoins. And it's just another way that Bitcoin can offer you more freedom. Passportsforbitcoin.com. All right, let's continue here with your calls and thoughts. We've got Brian on the line in Nashua via Skype. Hello, Brian. Brian via Skype going once. Brian via Skype going twice. You know what? Sometimes we have problems uh, with the playback software here, or actually with the sound driver. So uh, bear with us while we do some testing here. Um, let's see. Toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. That is the number that allows you to take control here. Let's try in the meantime, Kristen in New York. We're going to give her another shot. There were some technical difficulties before. Kristen, are you with us this time? Yes, I am. All right. Go ahead with your thoughts tonight. Okay. This is what's been kind of bothering me, is mm-hmm. the human trafficking and forced sexual slavery. I think a lot of people are bothered by that. I live in a town to where I was somebody's property for two and a half years. Can you oh just describe that situation to me? He is, yes. I was one of his slaves. I was known as a pain girl to him. He would beat me, choke me. Oh, wow. Uh, how, how did you end up in this situation? Were you abducted? Me? No, actually I wasn't. I was looking for uh, emotional and financial. And how old were you at the time? I was 42. Okay. So an unusual age for somebody to get into sex slavery, but I guess it happens at various different places. A lot of times you're dealing with like teenage runaways who are, you know, trying to get out of their parents' house. They, of course, have nothing else that they can do legally besides, you know, they're too young in some cases to get a regular job or that doesn't bring in enough money. Uh, And the, you know, the attraction of prostitution is certainly there. And then, you know, it's typically the the pimps that will then basically take them in and then never let them go. But uh, so is this a pimp situation? Was he, uh, you know... Uh, were you, were you using no. use prostitution? No, 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 no. No. Um, he would do whatever he felt like to me whenever he felt like to me. Okay, but how did you end up meeting the guy? I mean, how many years ago was this when this started? Um, I had known him through living in town, and I was propositioned to try something different. I thought, sure, why not? And I signed a contract. A sex slavery contract? Yes. That thing can't be binding. I still don't understand. How did you meet this person in the first place? He was just well-known in town. You had a relationship with him, like a business relationship? Or how did you get the connection in the first Um, place to where at some point— Mutual passing. What's that? Mutual passing in a bar. Okay. So you met this guy in a bar, and at some point— he propositioned you to be his sex slave. He actually propositioned me to be his mistress. Uh huh. And it went south from there. Within about the first three months, the punishment, the discipline, the humiliation, 
all went very bad very quickly. Were you into that kind of sexual thing before, that kink, if you will, the humiliation and all that, or was that something new to you at that time? No. That was new. Okay. But you were bored. You thought, okay, my sex life is too vanilla. Let's try to spice it up. This guy looks interesting. You signed a contract. What were the terms? That he would take care of me, Mm. that he would take care of my financial needs, my emotional needs, my social needs. All I had to do was be there for him. You had to submit to him, right? Do what he wanted. Now, um, was this a situation and, where, like, there was these uh, gals that were kept in the the basement of this, uh, I can't remember what it is, Castro fella, um, Ariel Castro um, in, I can't remember whether it was Ohio or something like that. That's, was Were you locked up, or did you have no, the opportunity to leave? I had to wear a collar. Oh, I could leave anytime I wanted, but I knew that if I left, I was going to be beaten when I got back. If you got back, but if you left and said, you know what, I'm done with this contract, Uh, this is not what I bargained for, see you later, I'm never going to come back here again, then would he have come and kidnapped you? No. Actually, I went to him and I said, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I went out. And I got beat for 36 hours. What were the terms of exit in the contract? Was there a termination clause? Yeah, there was a termination clause that if any portion of the contract was broken, that if he broke bones, uh, if I was employed, cost me my job, uh, cost me a relationship, if I was in one and seeing him, um, death, or bleeding. Well, he definitely made up for the last part of it. I was roughed up pretty good. I was black and blue for about three weeks. So this doesn't really sound like sex slavery to me. It does, uh, doesn't does sound like you were kept against your will. Well, she was for 36 hours at the end of the contract. Oh, I no. See, that's the whole thing. When I submitted to him, I was not allowed to go anywhere without his permission. I wasn't allowed to take a shower without his permission. I was not allowed to eat without his permission. But you knew all that was coming. Yeah, this is a very strange situation. I I mean, it's it's really odd. So the contract was the contract was violated by him. It sounds like in the beginning, if all of these things that happened during this experience were ultimately surprises to you, right? Yes. Okay. I was very vanilla when I came into this. Mm-hmm. And now that I've left, and I have suffered my own horror of being a sex slave and a survivor of sex slavery. Yeah, I don't know um, if this is, I don't know if I'm going to count this as sex slavery. I mean, you signed a contract agreeing to total submission to this man in return for him taking care of you. I mean, it's a bad deal, I think, in a lot of cases, but to you, it sounded okay in the moment. And from what you said, is you could leave anytime you wanted to. But when she said she wanted out of the contract, he beat her for 36 she hours. She should have left. Well, let me ask you this <laughs> um, What happened that you. You know, why did you have a conversation with him, I want out, instead of just packing up your meager belongings and departing? Because I figured he would respect me enough in the end. Hmm. Well, you were being submissive, maybe even without intending uh, to be in that particular case. I'm sorry, I don't consider this the same as somebody who's kidnapped and forced to have sex with people, uh, you know, against their will. This was totally, you know, even though it wasn't your will necessarily exactly what he did to you, you never should have submitted to this guy in the first place if you didn't want that possibility to happen. I mean, I, my heart goes out to you. I'm sorry. I think sorry. it's horrifying yeah, is what it's I a, think. It's a terrible story, but I don't think it, it ranks to the point of being sex slavery if you've consented. Thanks for the call, Kristen. Uh, the toll-free number, and good luck. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Sex slavery is something that happens against your will. Abuse comes way. in all types of different forms. When you consent to the abuse, that's a little bit of a weird situation, isn't it? More coming up here on Free Talk Live. And some people are into that stuff. 
One little joint supplement. You know this powerful little pill is great for your joints. It even has powerful benefits to help increase your mobility and flexibility. But the joint supplements of today are sadly incomplete because they don't give you the joint relief you're looking for. Until now. Introducing the complimentary two-week sample of Instaflex, our most powerful joint formula ever. It's the number one selling joint supplement at GNC. The only thing our complimentary sample of Instaflex is missing is the price. Because right now, we're offering adults a complimentary two-week sample as part of a nationwide giveaway. Call and claim your sample today. 1-800-608-9424. Instaflex provides powerful, effective joint relief for your knees, hands, even your hips. Prove it to yourself by calling now for your complimentary sample. Instaflex is available at GNC, Walgreens, and CVS. But you can only get your complimentary two-week sample by calling 1-800-608-9424. Call now for your two-week Instaflex sample. 1-800-608-9424. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17 cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPRadio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at News.FPP.cc and books at Shop.FPP.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. I'm Mark Stevens of the No Stay Project. And are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you're only helping the government. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available right now. Learn it, use it, spread it. So get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Free. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain here. Maybe we could sneak your call in. If you dial in now, 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro XPN toll-free line, 855-450-3733. North American Bitcoin Conference. It's July the 19th and 20th in Chicago at the McCormick Place South Building. And uh, there'll be all kinds of liberty-oriented and Bitcoin-oriented speakers there. You can go check them out at btcchicago.com. Okay, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's continue here with your calls and thoughts. We've got David in Kalamazoo listening to WKZO. Hey, David. David in Kalamazoo going once. 
Oh, we're having some trouble with the uh, the phone lines here tonight. I'm not sure what's going on. David in Kalamazoo going twice. We want to put him back on hold. Maybe he's in a bad cell. Let's talk to Brian in. We give him one more chance. Brian in Nashua. He said he was muted before. Are you with us now? I am. Can you Excellent. hear me now? I'm glad it wasn't our fault. Go ahead. I just wanted to commend Greg first for being for someone that sounds like a skeptic. He certainly did the intellectually honest thing instead of just kind of giving his opinion on something, but by trying to actually understand where his problems were. Oh, I that's think he's, the a, only... he's an excellent caller. Um, I mean, he's a really, he's a guy who's uh, honest and um, he is, you know, thinks about these issues. I, I've, you know, I'm talking I, about the call we had at the very beginning of this hour and throughout most of the second hour, actually. It's very rare that somebody will be held on for more than a segment. And that guy got held for like three or four. And, but he's called for over the course of maybe two months asking good questions mm -hmm. over and yeah. over again. Um, it's obvious yeah. he's got an Smart. opinion, but he he doesn't let his emotions get, get, you know, get on top of him. He's just I mean, I'm, I think he's an awesome caller. Mm -hmm. Just very intellectually honest, yep. which I, I just I want to put because of that intellectual property, you guys went in that direction. Do you know that the, the United States was very close to passing the end of what we call the first sale doctrine? And um, you guys give the example that when you buy a DVD, you kind of own that DVD. Well, why this? was Wiley sued a foreign student because he was reselling textbooks that were the identical textbooks in the United States, but they were issued to only him in his country in India. So when he tried to sell it for a cheaper price to U.S. students because the, their textbook stores horribly over them, they sued him. And he took him to federal court, and they, and he, they initially won, and they ordered him to pay millions of dollars to Wiley. Now, that doesn't make any sense because he bought the textbooks. But this country is that close to losing to, – to basically making intellectual property rights go out – go through the roof in, in absurdity. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very thin line that you need to tread if you do want to actually hold intellectual property. What? But I mean if right. I wanted – what I really wanted your take on – But that's the social contract. We'll change it anytime we feel like it. Indeed. What I really wanted your take on was after going to Porkfest, what, what did you guys – there was this kind of thing that came up that was called libertarian communism. And I didn't know that apparently if you go check on Wikipedia for anarchism, you find nothing that kind of relates to any of the principles of the Free State Project. And I was a bit shocked. But apparently these people have a very, very, very personal attachment to that term. So if you call yourself an anarchist and people try to look it up, you'll be quite surprised what you find. Now, are you guys familiar with this group? The anarcho-communists? Sure. Yeah. What is your t what is your opinion on them? Were they at the Porkfest? There were some lefty uh, libertarians there. Maybe maybe a few ANCOMs at Porkfest. There might be some, yeah, some red and blacks is another term that people use for them. But this is one of the many reasons why I never use the term anarchist to describe my thought process. Me there's, neither. There's a variety of reasons, but this is one of the reasons. I think it's a terrible term. I think it is completely misleading. Um, I don't believe in no government. None of this, you know, for a variety of reasons. But the fact is, is that there's this fight between what I will call socialists calling themselves anarchists and libertarians calling themselves anarchists over who's the more anarchist anarchist who's and the it's true the, anarchist right it's the stupidest fight in the world it's like arguing people arguing over oh no you're not a terrorist i'm a terrorist you know god what a <laughs> dumb argument i mean you know, here i'll tell you what they're commie you can be the anarchist because you can be allied with the people that are throwing Molotov cocktails on the television in Europe mm -hmm. with black uh, masks. Who are almost the face. always ANCOMs, as I understand. Yes. Right. Well, I don't know. I don't they don't know. believe in property. Uh, they're only, to the news viewing audience, they're just anarchists. Right. That's all they are. So you can have that term. And you can. I would much rather have the term voluntarist or, um, you know, not. Uh, I'll take abolitionist. That's a good one. I'll take uh, conscientious objector. I'll take. Liber I'll, I'll take libertarian. It's not my favorite either because Still a lot better of people. Than anarchist. A lot of people have sullied it, but. Yeah, people that run around using this term anarchist, I'm an anarchist. Look at me. I got a patch on my jacket. Yeah, please. <laughs> you are not convincing anybody of anything. Now, I will say that if you, your friend, um, you, you know, you're, you're, you're a well-dressed man in a suit and you're out at uh, lunch with your well-dressed uh, friends and their suits and, and dresses and um, it comes up in conversation, you say, well, no, I'm an anarchist. And then you can have 
you know, a lunch to explain to these people what you mean by that word. But the important part that you need to consider is, is those people go and do some research on what they mean by what you mean by anarchist on the Internet. They're going to come up with things entirely different than what you said, yeah. thus twisting the whole philosophy in their mind. I think that's Brian's point. It's the worst thing that uh, Murray Rothbard did was coming up with the term um, uh, anarcho-capitalist. An anarcho-capitalist. That it was my point. Because there was one found uh, fundamentally annoying thing that I saw, because a lot of them follow Vermin Supreme. They keep telling you property is theft. Yeah. And they said the, the concept of property is theft. And it, it, it just has so many uh, – it's just basically a very, very – a uh, convoluted idea of property that it, it you have I have no idea where to begin. But well, they but, but, but they like being labeled as the, like as you know a followings of Vermin Supreme. So they it's kind of annoying just because I'm forced to see what what they have to say. It's some kind of fallacy too because the the concept of property has to exist for theft to be used. Right. Precisely. So, so it's it's I don't know if that's circular. It's not quite circular reasoning, but it's and, close. And they have it's this vacuous logic. Well, the, it's very interesting. Like the, their idea is, is that you may own a hammer and that hammer may be your hammer, but you may own two hammers and employ another person to to use the other one. That then that you're exploiting. Point, that then you're exploiting the worker. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that worker would sit home and starve if you didn't give him a hammer and put him to work, it's exploitation. Brian, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate it. Let's continue here. Also on Skype, we have Nathan in Texas. Nathan, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Brett and Mark. Nathan in Texas. Hello. He's picking up his microphone. There he is. You're on the air. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. When it when it's on hold, I can't hear the show, so I've got to have it going on the internet, and I've got to press all these buttons. Yep. Nobody cares uh, about your story. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, I wanted to welcome Brett back and uh, ask him a question about the autonomy on acreism podcast that he did. Uh, you the have this. What? You have a guest. Autonomy on acreism. Uh, I, I'm doing a series called Autonomy Through Agorism, and oh, we're exploring agorism. these okay. uh, different aspects of agorism. To which is what agorism is what. Agorism is a counter economics working outside the system financially, okay. essentially. So, growing your own food would be an example. And I know we had a debate about this before. But Nathan, what is your, what is your question? Well, you've had a guest on also named Thaddeus Russell who has this idea that there's this division between work and play. And you had a guest on in the Autonomy Through Agorism cast who disagreed with that and said that no work can be fulfilling and a uh, you know, a good thing to do as yeah. long as it, I guess it's a productive thing, I guess, that you want. I mean, I, I, I was wondering, what's your opinion on that? I have stuff that I do that I call work, but I enjoy it, mm -hmm. right? So I think what Thaddeus Russell is saying is that one of the things that he's fighting in his book, The Renegade History of the United States, is something that has been put into all of us right into the 21st century is this idea of the Puritan work ethic, the idea that work in itself is good, that you are worth more as a human being in the eyes of God if you work, right? It has nothing to do with satisfaction. So the guest you're speaking about is a guy named Jamin who lives in Pennsylvania and has this awesome uh, permaculture uh, self-sustaining farm that he runs with his wife and his family. And he loves the work that he mm -hmm. does on the farm. And he finds it incredibly satisfying to, you know, be able to input some work and then the output is this sustainable system that he doesn't always have to go back to. So it's totally different. It's not like, oh, I'm a farmer and I, you know, plow the field and then I feel good because I worked. He actually enjoys what he's doing. He enjoys figuring things out. So they're entirely different. Um, so it's basically just that if you're choosing to do it based on your own values, is that the key distinction you'd make? Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's an important distinction. I think there could be other ones as well. But the idea that you're not like, I don't think Jamin is just working because he feels like he needs to do it to be good in the eyes of God. That couldn't be further from what he thinks. Well, I've got to say that uh, idle hands do the devil's work. Hey, thanks, Nathan, for your call tonight. We are out of Keeps time. Out of the, yep. You can check out more of Brett on his website, schoolsucksproject.com, for downloadables, video, audio, forum, fun stuff. Absolutely. All free, most of it. There's a like a way to support you, though, there. Yeah, there's well. a bonus content section. So check that out. Schoolsucksproject.com. We'll see you tomorrow night online. In the meantime, freetalklive.com. Good night. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. 
from wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Cap Black Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates, online at LibertyBeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, July 9th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,323, while silver opened at $21.16, and Bitcoin is trading at $618.82. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all of your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code LIBERTY and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs. Online, affordablesound.com, or call them up at 512-459-5253. In the news... Israel launched a series of airstrikes on Gaza militants Tuesday after the militants fired more than 85 rockets towards the country Monday evening. The rockets struck several major cities, causing air raid sirens to wail throughout the city of Jerusalem and central Israel. More than 50 targets were hit by the airstrikes launched by Israel, killing at least 16, and five Palestinians were shot dead after crossing the border into Israel. Bay Systems, a global company engaged in the development of advanced defense, including security and aerospace systems, announced plans to invent 3D-printed drones, directed energy weapons, and a modular drone called the Transformer. Named as such because of its capabilities to fly as a single unit or to divide into three separate crafts, the company plans to fit the Transformer drone with directed energy weapons, capable of firing a concentrated beam of energy at the speed of light potentially able to destroy fast-moving jets with extreme accuracy. Through an internal Border Patrol executive summary, Town Hall confirmed that at least 16 unaccompanied illegal minors, those under the age of 18, according to United States government policy, are members of the brutal El Salvadorian street gang Mera Salvarucha, or MS-13. Graffiti left on the walls of the Nogales Border Patrol Processing Center suggests the young men had ties to the organization. The gang is associated with violence ranging from brutal assaults, torture and murder, and has been known to recruit middle and high school students. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock Central Time at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, July 9th, 2014. 
Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. In a plan to turn solid waste into power, U.S. company World Echo Energy signed an agreement to invest nearly $1.2 billion to generate electricity in Iran, as stated in a report by the Russian Times. The project, which aims to produce around 250 megawatts per day by burning 1,500 tons of solid waste, is expected to create 650 immediate jobs, most of them employed locally. The deal marks a further thawing of relations between the U.S. and Iran, after all business activity was halted between the two countries following the 1979 U.S. hostage crisis. A new study conducted by researchers at the University of Michigan concludes that despite sub-zero temperatures, water in its liquid form does exist on Mars, but only during summer and spring months and for just a few hours at a time. That report from The Independent. The findings propel beliefs that the planet is more than capable of supporting life, especially with the right temperature and presence of a certain salt discovered there last year. The study's lead researcher, Dr. Nilton Renan, said even just one tiny droplet of water is enough for bacteria to grab a hold of support and survive. Liberty Beat comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill. He has a new show called Come and Talk It. It's live Sunday afternoons at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. That's 4 o'clock Sunday afternoon at 1370 AM in Austin. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Find them online at CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, July 9th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Sony released this week the Nasal HD 340s, a brand new pair of high quality nose buds designed to let users blast different scents into their nostrils throughout the day. The Onion let consumers across the nation sound off about their excitement for the new product. I've always got them in my nose. I work at the gym, on the bus, wherever. These days, I can't stop smelling tennis ball. Retailing for $49.99, the nose buds accompany the launch of Sony's new online odor store, which sells over 22,000 different smells for download and immediate inhalation. Still, not everyone is quite as enthusiastic about the new product. These things suck. I mean, a lot of times it only works out of the right nostril. The other day I tried smelling picnic table, it smelled more like hardwood floor. And also, to be honest, I have a really hard time breathing with these things on. This is the Onion News Network.